one today with the six o'clock news. I'm Jess Adamson. Injured or living with chronic pain? Book an appointment at Physio Extra today. Six locations. PhysioExtra.com. American footballer, broadcaster and actor O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. He's passed away in Las Vegas after treatment for prostate cancer. Simpson was in movies including the Towering Inferno and the Naked Gun series. But O.J. was best known for his acquittal in a landmark murder trial 30 years ago when he was accused of killing ex-wife Nicole Brown and her friend Ron Goldman. An estimated 150 million people watched the trial on TV. In the matter of the the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty of the crime of murder. OJ was later jailed again for kidnapping and armed robbery in 2008. An off-duty police officer's vehicle has been targeted by thieves in the southern suburbs. It happened between late Wednesday night and early Thursday morning while parked in a Hallett Cove driveway. The hunt for the stolen items is continuing. A load-bearing vest, handcuffs and a baton are missing. Stormy Summers, one of Adelaide's most colourful characters, will be farewelled today. Mel Usher reports. Stormy Summers died last month at the age of 77. The controversial madam, who once had a brothel in the city, made plenty of headlines over the years. Her relationships and acquaintances, multiple marriages, a campaign to become Lord Mayor and her high-profile eviction among them. She also pushed for the legalisation of prostitution and sex workers' rights. Her funeral service will be held in the Heysen Chapel at Centennial Park from 3.30 this afternoon and is open to the public. Defence Minister Richard Miles will travel to Ukraine to combat claims of faltering support for the under-siege nation. Labor MPs have voiced their growing frustration with the government's refusal to reopen the Australian Embassy in Kiev. PM Anthony Albanese was the last government minister to visit Ukraine in 2022. The Australian War Memorial is in the firing line. Alexander Nimo reports. A report from the Australian National Audit Office reveals that the memorial intentionally kept ministers in the dark regarding decisions linked to a $550 million redevelopment project. The Auditor General found briefs handed to ministers provided insufficient details and did not meet their obligations under Public Governance, Performance and Accountability Acts. Contracts were split to avoid triggering the $1 million threshold for ministerial approval, with one contract being varied to $999,999, $1 below the threshold. The War Memorial says it has accepted the recommendations and they've already addressed many of the issues. You'll spot the purple polywaffle packaging back on our shelves today. The chocolate bar that disappeared in 2009 is back as a bag of bites. Phil Sims from Men says reproducing a beloved product like the polywaffle has taken the local company five years. Recipe development, a lot of uh, trials, a lot of market research, taste testing panels and the eureka moment was there at the end. The state government and the agriculture industry are pulling on their soccer boots this afternoon at Hindmarsh Stadium. The SA Produce Charity Match is a friendly to raise funds for local primary producers and small agribusinesses. Charity campaign manager Penny Reedy says there'll be some familiar faces on the field. And we're raising funds for growers. You know, we've got Vincent Tarzier and Lucy Hood and we've got a few politicians out there. We've got people from SAPOL. So we've got these two teams that are going to be going head to head. Now to 5AA Sport. Colours, custom design, any house, any style. Gliderol Garage Doors. Gliderol.com.au Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Jess. 41st and Brisbane has made it back-to-back -back wins after getting over the line against Melbourne by 22 points at the MCG. The win was extra sweet for Lockie Neal, who was playing in his 250th match. So proud of our effort tonight. I thought our pressure was unbelievable and... We played a very similar brand to last week and um, it stood up against probably the best team in the comp at the moment, so really proud of the guys. Audio there thanks to Channel 7. The Crows and Port will play their matches tomorrow. The Power welcome back Sam Powell Pepper and Ollie Wines, but lose Travis Boak to injury while Jeremy Finlayson is suspended. Adelaide, meantime, brings in Will Hamill and Lockie Gallant while Paddy Parnell is injured and Chris Burgess has been dropped. 
Let's go to golf and big hitting American Bryson DeChambeau, who plays on the Live Tour, has made a blistering start at the US Masters, finishing at seven under in his opening round. Former champion Danny Willett has also made a great start. He finished at four under, while Victor Hovland is also currently at four under. The best of the Aussies, Cam Davis, he's currently three under through eight holes, while Cameron Smith is just a shot further back at two under. Adam Scott is just teeing off in his round, as is Jason Day. And in the NRL last night, round six got underway and it was the Sydney Roosters with a 22-20 to 20 point win against the Newcastle Knights. And that's the 5AA Sport. Thanks, Tom. Now, the 5AA forecast. See any issue firsthand with AutoCam. Real-time video, direct to you from your Automasters technician. Partly cloudy and 21 today, just the same again tomorrow, Sunday and Monday. A tip to be cloudy and 22 degrees. Right now, it's 11 degrees. More news as it happens on 5AA. The new gen Mitsubishi Triton is a bit of a beast. Hear the ferocious growl of 150 kilowatts of power and 470 newton metres of torque from its 2.4 litre bi-turbo diesel. See its 3.5 tonnes of brute force towing power and feel its sure-footedness as it masters any terrain with an active limited slip differential. The powerful new gen Mitsubishi Triton is out there. Visit your local Mitsubishi Motors dealership to book a test drive today. Nothing can contain, tame or frighten a Mitsubishi Triton. Living with diabetes? Ditch finger pricks with Freestyle Libre. Freestyle Libre is a small wearable sensor that monitors your glucose levels and trends and sends them straight to your phone. Instant up-to-date feedback. No finger pricks. How good is that? And you can trial Freestyle Libre for only $15. Just head to freestylelibre.com.au to find out how. T's and C's apply. Follow directions for use. Read warnings before purchase. Free yourself from finger pricks with Freestyle Libre. If you'll need a window And not just anything will do Just call Statesman Window Back to redirect to you Nobody beats Statesman Windows Not on quality and certainly not on service Windows, sliding doors, bifolds and more Made right here in Adelaide Factory direct to you For windows when and where you want them Call Statesman Windows States.com.au Windows when and where you want them oh, Windows when and where you want them there's mega deals on this week at your local IGA. Like Heinz Beans or Spaghetti, 300 grams selected varieties, $1.40 each, half price. Specials across the store right now, only at IGA. Offer ends April 16, participating stores only, excludes Foodland. Stay informed, get involved. 5AA, always Adelaide. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. Eight minutes after six. Good morning to you. Welcome to Friday on 5AA Breakfast. It is the 12th of April coming up on the program this morning. We're off to the US. We'll uh, get the latest uh, on the surprise passing of... O.J. Simpson, who um, who has died overnight, uh, one of the more colourful, remarkable, controversial figures in U.S. history. Uh, someone who certainly made an impression down here as well. Uh, we will be talking more about that after seven o'clock on the program today. Uh, Michael Packey will join us. We'll wrap the last week in federal politics. Geez, it got a kick along yesterday with the announcement of the Made in Australia policy by the uh, federal government. A huge debate has come out about the wisdom or otherwise of that. Uh, do you, are you in, in the market for a private island? Don't worry, we've got the real estate agent for you. We'll be chatting with Richard Van Hoff after 8 o'clock today, who is selling a, uh, a private island. Michael Smith will join us. We'll flash back in time. And, of course, it is a meat tray uh, Friday. So we've got a meat tray thanks to Chris and the team at Hayden's Family Butcher Shop 52 Burnside Village. David Penberthy, good morning to you. Good morning, listeners. Good morning, Will. Yeah, waking, waking up to the news that O.J. Simpson has... has Drop dead. Um, not a very polite way to put it, is it? But, you know, I don't really go in for the whole passed away euphemism, particularly for somebody like him. I was going to say... He's I, pretty hard to get too misty-eyed about. Isn't yeah, he? I don't think anyone's crying about. What was the famous line, if if it doesn't fit... If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Yeah. Who was his lawyer? Uh, well, there was a there was a team of them. He had the card... Uh, the Cochran? Kim... He had, what was his name? The, uh, the Kardashian father. The... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh... Johnny Cochran. Yeah, Johnny Cochran. Yeah, he, the, the one who was famously uh, satirised in Seinfeld as the, the sort of yeah uh, highly strung 
black attorney yep. who, who, who prosecuted on behalf of Kramer about the coffee being too hot and the foam cup. <laughs> but it was, it was basically a who's who of the biggest names in criminal defence lawyers in America. Yeah. And somehow he did it. And the backdrop to it too, sort of in the aftermath of the LA riots and everything was, you know, so split down race, racial lines like so often things are in the US. Well, there's that great documentary where that you'd never do in any court case oh, in Australia because you can't, where they interview all the jurors. Yeah. And there are a number of them just went, <laughs> given everything that was going on, I don't care whether he did it or not. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's extraordinary. That is such a good documentary. It's amazing. What's it called? I can't think what it's called. Is it, it called it, The Trials of O.J. Simpson? Could be, yeah. It's amazing. It's because then Netflix, it, it, it? it doesn't feel like then when he ultimately went to jail for memorabilia theft that he was bizarrely involved in, There's that like, didn't really feel like justice either. Tax, tax evasion, isn't it? Exactly. That, was, that, was, that didn't feel like justice either because that was another case of something that could happen in the American judicial system that would never happen here. The judge just went, I, thought, I reckon you were guilty of that other crime. Mm. So I'm going to give you a totally ridiculous sentence. For See, this one, what what he what he did um, to his to his wife uh, and and her new partner, just unbelievable. But but prior to that though, he was I loved him in all those Naked Gun films. Mm. I thought he was he was a superb sort of cameo role, a, incredibly charismatic man. And you'd know more about his football career than than, than I do. But wasn't he? He was a superstar. Yeah, and what what didn't he play an important role in the NFL? The whole idea of the running game, like how many yards gained. He was a running back. Yeah, he broke because he was so far. He was a star in college. Like he, it's hard to imagine in an Australian context this happening. Like just trying to think, it's sort of because he was a national star. He wasn't wasn't local. Who did he play for? Buffalo. LA. Oh, okay, Buffalo, New York. Yeah, the Bills. Yeah, right. I think, okay. I think most of his career was Buffalo. I'm just trying to like, be like, imagine the biggest name Australian rules footballer of the 90s mm. murdering his wife, ex wife, and her new partner and being involved in a police chase in a car that's then beamed around nationally, but also appeared in three or four of the biggest comedy film. Like, the scale of the stardom and the controversy is like nothing we've ever seen in Australia. What was the car he had? The white um... uh, Bronco? Bronco, yeah, yeah. And that, that was. That was like a live TV event, that chase. It went on forever. Yeah. It was just crazy. It was the, the, the wildest story. But yeah, I didn't even know he was sick. But, you know, no great heartfelt send-off for him. No, not at all. I mean, I, I think that the father of the, the bloke who married um, Nicole, um, he, his quote was, no great loss. Mm. And I think it's... The father, he's got every right to say that. Yeah, completely. Uh, 14 minutes after six, uh, the meat tray this morning. Uh, call in and see Chris, the team at uh, Hayden's Family Butcher. They're at uh, Shop 52 in Burnside Village. Uh, there have been changes to this famous board game. It's weather's by the fire, it's summer's by the sea. It's holidays and family. Yeah, it's Scrabble, America's good time game. It's Coco and it's kids, old stories and friends. It's rainy weekends, you hope will never end. It's Scrabble. What have happened to jingles like? We don't sell stuff with quality, no, fleshed out jingles like that anymore. Anyway, Scrabble for the first time in 75 years. The maker Mattel is making a major change. Uh, they're doing a, a new... <laughs> they're making a version for the kids that grew up where the idea of scoring uh, in playing oh. team sport was, you know, a little bit... You're, you're kidding you're me. a little precious uh they've got the no more scoring gameplay option uh there's now well, how do you know who's winning it's not about winning david it's about socializing i presume oh, uh it's seriously? a double-sided version of the game one side's the original uh for those who can who can deal with you know a little bit of competition so what, what's triple word score now say it's a, and there's one side with a less competitive version uh in the it's called Scrabble Together. It'll include helper cards. There'll be a simpler scoring system, a quicker play, and you can play in teams. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's, That's like the, the the primary school football rules about you know not you're not allowed to have best yeah. on ground or well, this is why, leading goal kicker. That's why, but that's that's a generation has grown up with that and now going. Hang on, what do you mean this triple word scores? What does everyone get a triple word score? So if you get if you spell you know axolotl or mm. quiz. Or you spell cat mm. on a triple word score, or it. Mm. You know, if someone 
merges toxin with axolotl to create two words with an X on the on the triple letter score on the blue tile. Creative, you know, quite obscure taxing words. Mm. But how does everyone the, else feel that the didn't dullard come up with who it, sits there writing it or cat? The cat sat on the mat. There's some good three letter words we, for you. That we, we don't want to focus two years old. <laughs> we don't want to focus You're on, on the, the same new version. Score though. As the axolotl guy. The beauty of the original version was for its ability to start arguments and fights. All those well, old school board games did it. about the molly coddling. Exactly nonsense. right. So for the meat tray this morning, we want we're going to ask we want to ask you. What's something a bit like Scrabble that's guaranteed to start an argument? Something mm. that's guaranteed to start an argument. Eight we, double two three double o double o. You can text us on the Dutton's text line zero four eight zero eight thirteen ninety five. We got a couple of things, haven't we? Oh yeah, in yeah. this room. Yeah. Yep. Well, we got a long. I think we fleshed out pretty much everything we disagree on over yeah, the course of the last nine years. We've come full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something that's guaranteed to start an argument. Well, the old Middle East is a pretty topical one, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, they don't have to be so high stakes. Mm. Lucy had a good one when we were chatting about this in the in the uh, office a moment ago. Where do you store sauce? Oh, that's a great one. That is a that is a classic. How to start an argument at a dinner party? Where, where do Fridge you put, or pantry? Where do you put it? Well, like, like it turns out, Lucy and I are in complete agreement on this. Your basic rudimentary giant bottle cheap sauce goes in the pantry. Your Beerenberg stuff goes in the fridge. That's funny, isn't it? Because I do that too. <laughs> maybe this is I've less. Never than, about maybe that. It's less, I'd, no, I'd never thought about it until Lou said it too. Because we've got. Have you had that Beerenberg? Uh, I think it's called Truck House sauce. No, I haven't it's had that excellent. one. Oh, it's, I need to try that. Uh, Lou just said amazing. She's into it. Uh, I think it's called Truck House sauce. It's a new variety, and it's. It's a tomato sauce, but it's just got a lot of vinegary chili zing. Mm, nice. It doesn't blow your head off, but it's it's like a good spicy barbecue sauce from the States, like a Carolina style. Someone simply texted through one word, Trump. Oh, yes. Something that's guaranteed to start an argument. That, if you called in, you'd be in the running to win a meat tray this morning. Eight double two three double o double o. What's something guaranteed to start an argument? You don't have to have the argument. You just need to just put the... Uh, Put the suggestion into the ether and potentially win yourself a great meat tray thanks to a terrific butcher there at uh, Burnside Village. Uh, I like this uh, text from Rob, one of our funniest texters. This is, tests the boundaries of the too soon rule, but we're going to do it anyway. Rob writes, so here the casket of OJ is actually being transported in a white Bronco. <laughs> Be a nice touch, wouldn't it? 18 after 6, news headlines next. At Coles, there's great value hands down across fruit and veg this week. Like delicious, 100% Aussie, loose, white, seedless grapes. Just $4.50 a kilo. Get great value hands down at Coles. Offer ends Tuesday. Experience the wonders of the world in comfort and style with Thilhoff and Travel, Trafalgar and Insight Vacations. Save up to 15% on selected 2024 tours worldwide with Trafalgar and Insight site vacations plus exclusive savings of up to four hundred dollars per couple from must-sees to local secrets unique experiences and delicious dining make your dream holiday a reality with trafalgar and inside vacations contact phil hoffman travel visit pht.com.au this is rb day for super craft bedding with tales from the bedroom i was talking to sandy in the office the other day her son works in a local waste centre. He said, Mum, we see everyone else's mattress brand come through. Some even look new, but we hardly ever see Supercraft mattresses. Why is that? Sandy replied, when you know you're on a good thing, you tend to hold on to it. Supercraft Bedding, building better flippable beds. 42 Richmond Road, Keswick. For over three decades, Regent Homes has been synonymous with crafting architecturally bespoke homes. Each one a testament to Regent Homes' unwavering commitment to design, quality and sophistication. And because Regent Homes is a South Australian family-owned company, they understand more than anyone what it takes to build a family home. Experience Regent Homes award-winning display homes at Lightsview and Blackwood Park. Innovative design, elevated living. Visit regenthomes.com.au If you're packing up your family to travel across the land The land will treat you different in a Dave Benson caravan There's never any roadworks when you're driving Aussie made And you'll always find a park that's nestled safely in the shade The magpies will stop swooping 
kangaroos give way You won't see a single mosquito at the end of each perfect day And if the cuppers pull you over, they won't wreck your plans When you tell them you bought Aussie made from Dave Benson Caravans 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. 21 after 6 news headlines time. OJ Simpson, the NFL and Hollywood star who fell from grace after being accused of double murder, has died at the age of 76. Simpson was acquitted of the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Simpson-Brown, and her friend in a highly publicised trial back in 1995. Several years later, he was found liable for their deaths in a civil lawsuit, spent nine years in prison for armed robbery. Uh, he, uh, Carl E. Douglas was one of OJ's defence attorneys during the murder trial, and he's told the Today Show he leaves behind a uh, complex legacy. There's an entire generation that the only thing they know about O.J. Simpson is that he was accused of a double murder. They do not know that he was a college star, that he was a pro football star, and that he became an, a commercial icon. Stormy Summers' funeral will be held today, and it's open to the public. The controversial madam, who once had a brothel in the city, made plenty of headlines in her time. Uh, her relationships and acquaintances, she had a, a campaign to become Lord Mayor, she pushed for the legalisation of prostitution and sex workers' rights. Uh, the uh, service will be this afternoon in the Heysen Chapel at Centennial Park <laughs> from 3.30. That funeral could be an absolute riot, you know. Like, that will be raffish Adelaide at its best. You know, there'll be, there'll be cross-dresses mm. and people from the sex industry. Yeah. Um, I thought Peter Gers' uh, column about her was terrific, and obviously... Our own Jess Adamson, who, who, who knew her very well, uh, wrote that magnificent um, piece. Indeed, broke the story that Stormy had died. But um, the dramatis personae at today's send-off for Stormy could, could, be, uh, could be quite a unique, speci uh, a special Adelaide moment, you would, <laughs> you would imagine. And may she rest in peace. 23 after 6. Uh, this stat just stuns me. More than 70% of Australians are planning on travelling before the end of the month. Seriously? 70%. Does planning mean doing it or daydreaming about it? A tourism and transport forum survey found Melbourne to be the most popular destination for holidaymakers, followed by the Gold Coast. Melbourne. One in four respondents ranked travel as a top priority for non-essential spending, despite cost of living pressures. That's interesting, isn't it? Something about the human condition and Why are you going to, Melbourne? to go to places. This is where that guy wants to start charging, what, <laughs> $7 for a coffee or something. Unbelievable. I wonder how, yeah, uh, that, that, the footy trip's making up 60% of domestic travel in Australia. I've got an idea. I reckon we should bid to host the NRL Magic Round. I'm going to flesh that out later on. This is my new thing. Oh, okay. You may have jumped the shark. No, no, no. It makes sense. I've been thinking about it. All right, all right. We'll, we'll get look. all the visitors from New South Wales who've never come would come over. All right, we'll talk about that. Uh, we've got a uh, meat tray this morning. Uh, Shop 52 Burnside Village. Hayden's family butcher. We're asking you, what's something that's guaranteed to start an argument? Our Albert and correspondent Dave Lloyd's called in. Morning to you, Dave. Good morning, guys. Good morning. When you mentioned OJ Simpson during uh, the 90s, uh, I thought our biggest AFL star of the 90s, uh, he just had improper dealings with his best mate's wife in a bathroom. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the exact same name I was thinking as well, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when it comes to meat trays, we could obviously discuss the uh, viscosity of fog. Uh, we could also look at the virtues of uh, local government, just to get you two started. But given gather round was last weekend, what we should have done is we should have lined the uh, Hume Highway with signs saying it's a palmy, not a palmer. <laughs> oh, good Correct. one. Correct. That is excellent. Palmer. No, it really grinds my gears, the word Palmer. I'm just having a Palmer. What? Yeah. What? It doesn't even exist. A Palmer. Thank you, Dave. Wash it down with a big M. Guaranteed to start an own. argument, that one. Uh, keep them coming in. Lots of calls, actually. We'll get to them after 6.30 today. 11.3 degrees outside in the city at the moment. Uh, expect a top of 21 today. 
uh, the UV index is uh, going to hit, it looks like six, which is considered high. When it's three and above, make sure you cover up your sun protection and stay sun smart. Download the sun smart app. 21 tomorrow and 22 on Sunday. So uh, similar days to today for the weekend with no real chance of rain. Uh, the first chance of rain comes Monday, but now that's been revised down actually. So that's unlikely too, to a 10% chance of any rain. 22 the expected top, 21 on Tuesday, 21 Wednesday, and then 22 on Thursday. Tom Renz in the 5AA Breakfast Studio as we turn our minds to sport the weekend ahead and indeed the sleep that I'm sure Rennie didn't have last night on account of the uh, Masters teeing off. Colours, custom design, any style, any house, glider or garage doors, gliderol.com.au. Morning, Rennie. Morning to you, uh, Will. Yeah, we'll start there because uh, the US Masters is underway and Bryson DeChambeau, one of the live golfers who we'll see here in a couple of weeks, Boy, oh boy, hasn't he made a, an amazing start? He's fired a seven under round in tough conditions. Uh, he is seven under, and that was a 65. Windy conditions out there. And uh, he is just absolutely flying. Three shots clear of the field. The best of the Australians at the moment, Cam Smith and Cam Davis. They're both five shots back. Cam Smith, another wow. one we'll see here in um, in a couple of weeks' time. Is Deshombo the scientist, the, uh, the the experimenter? Yeah, the one that, you know, weighs all the balls. And, yeah. You know, he yeah. usually goes badly at the Masters, though, doesn't yeah. he? He's well, historically struggled. I mean, he did play in the morning, which is probably a help, um, right. you know, because it wasn't as windy. That said, that's a, that's a frighteningly good round. He's three clear, so you would think when the whips are cracking at the end, he'll be, you know, he should mm. make top ten from here. So that's a great start. Um, a few of the other Aussies are, you know, still just getting their rounds underway, including Adam Scott. So I'll keep you updated throughout the morning, but a pretty good start for American Bryson DeChambeau, Matt Fitzpatrick, and, and a couple of others. So Did the dodgy weather mean it was an even later night for you, Tom? Well, yeah, it didn't start. It was a two-and-a-half-hour delay, so I went to sleep a bit earlier, but then woke up at about 12.30 and sort of been through since. So you've and been awake since 12.30 a.m.? Most of the guys I've, uh, I've backed are probably in the bottom Are you going to go to bed before you go to Channel 9? Are you going to sleep in the car downstairs or something? Yeah, probably that. <laughs> 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 oh, mate, I'm going to try tune in to watch the news tonight. This could be a PB. Try and pinch a wink somewhere. Um, <laughs> maybe right. on the desk while I'm on there. Go and sleep in I'm High Square for yeah. a couple of hours <laughs> <laughs> on a bench. I'll give um, you these newspapers. What about last night's game? So, Brisbane, they've made it back to back wins. Mm. Um, impressive stuff in Lockie Neal's 250th. But it is a night that surely, once and for all, silences the questions around whether Brisbane can play this venue. The MCG, they come here, win and win comprehensively. Yeah, it was a good performance, wasn't it? They they probably had the scoreboard flatter, Melbourne, in the end. Yeah. Melbourne were, I think, lucky to be probably within eight goals. Uh, but Brisbane just took the foot off. Their season's underway now, isn't it, Brisbane? Mm. There were the question marks. Can they win at the MCG? Are they up for it again? I think maybe just victims of the fact it was such a short turnaround from last season, this season, an earlier start. But they look like they've got They're their too mojo good. back. They were too good. Their list is too good to struggle for too long. Yep. They, they look like the quality Brisbane Lions of yesteryear, yesterday, uh, last night. So, yeah, I think it was pretty ominous for the rest of the competition. They're Same. terrific to watch at full flight. They yeah. are. Melbourne probably psyched themselves out of that one a bit too because they just had two great weeks in Adelaide. I think, who was it? One of their players was quoted last week saying, well, we treated the trip to Adelaide like a business trip. We are just there to get the job done. They did. Beat the Crows, beat Port. But they probably went back to Melbourne thinking, oh, Brisbane are home. Mm. Brisbane are off. We'll be right. Exactly. And maybe as well, knowing they've got the bye this week, you know, oh, we're nearly there. Yeah. Get the, get the week off. You can sometimes just get into that false sense of security and, and just lull yourself into that. But they're, they're still 4-2. and two. I wouldn't be too concerned if I was a Melbourne fan, albeit disappointed with last night. Port, they bring back a couple of good players this week, don't they? Sam Pepper, Ollie Wines, they obviously lose Boak, which I think is common sense, you know, a bit older, a bit sore. Jeremy Finlayson, we know, is suspended. The Crows, I'm intrigued. Um, <laughs> they haven't really swung the axe. They're, oh, no, they're backing the boys in. Yeah. Because one thing that always works, Rennie, is if you do the same thing over and over again, <laughs> just try a little bit harder, you've probably got a premiership around the corner. Yeah, I'm not sure. Jeez, it's hard to get excited about Saturday. Yeah, it could be a tough one tomorrow. I think I'm going to be kayaking at my ponga. <laughs> I am. Yeah. yeah. I was saying to my wife, uh, we're going to take the kids out on the on the boats in the, the middle of the reservoir. Take the tranny out and listen and to she said, Will. what time's the game? I said, it's about 4.30, I think, so I reckon we should get to the reservoir at about mm. 10 to 4. <laughs> I tell you what. You want to see some, what makes ugly reading at the moment? It's the Crows announcing their team selection online. Yeah. 
to a person, if they get, the club is getting brutalised at well, the moment. People are fed up. I think the other thing is that I think of the 11 or top 12 draft picks from last year, Dan Curtin's the only one that only hasn't one. made his debut. Uh, Ethan Reid played for Gold Coast, a, a, a wafer-thin ruckman. Uh, O'Connell, the guy Geelong picked at 11, is another key defender. He's playing this week. And they're, they're undefeated. And they're four and zip. So I think that a lot of the Crows fans are saying, what the hell is going on at the moment? Why aren't we playing this kid? We're zipping four. He's a top 10 draft yeah. pick. Get him in the side. Mm. What are we waiting for? Yeah. So there's, there's, there's a bit of frustration at the moment. Yep. Well, I understand it and feel it. Good on you, Rennie. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Tom. Uh, glider or Garage Doors, adding strength, safety and style to your home. Gliderol.com.au. In about an hour's time, we're going to chat with um, uh, Wayne, Malira, uh, uh, Wayne Miller, should I say, who is going to be joining us on the call tomorrow for the uh, Crows-Carlton Excellent. game. We'd much rather him be out there, but if he's not going to be out there, he's going to lend his insights to us um, in the commentary position, and we're going to chat with him about it, see how he's feeling at about 7.20 this morning on 5 to Blow Breakfast. <laughs> This is 5AA News, always Adelaide. 21 and partly cloudy today with the 6.30 News, I'm Jess Adamson. Every body is unique. Let the Physio Extra team take care of your specific needs. PhysioExtra.com The family of OJ Simpson have announced his death at the age of 76 in Las Vegas. The former Buffalo Bills and 49ers footballer, broadcaster and actor was receiving chemotherapy for prostate cancer. Simpson made worldwide headlines in 1995, acquitted of the death of ex-wife Nicole Brown and her friend Ron Goldman. He was later deemed liable for their deaths in a civil court. In 2008, he was jailed for kidnapping and armed robbery. Ed Gordon was the first journalist to interview OJ after he left prison. Been with him on a number of occasions after the fact, and what he would do is when he would see someone looking at him, he would quickly go to them and say hello to them before they could say anything. It was a, a disarming tactic. OJ starred in films including The Towering Inferno, Capricorn One, Roots and the Naked Gun series. New police data has revealed more drivers have been caught speeding in the Adelaide Hills than anywhere else in our regions. The worst location was the fixed camera at Crafers on the southeastern freeway, which nabbed more than 7,000 motorists and cost drivers almost $4 million. The top four regional fixed cameras were all located on the southeastern freeway. With school holidays kicking off later today, the RAA is pleading for drivers to stick to the speed limit. The Prime Minister is confident his government's border policies are working. Several asylum seeker boats have reached Australian shores in recent months, most recently last Friday when 15 men arrived by boat in the Kimberley. There's suggestions asylum seekers are using speedboat to dodge detection. Anthony Albanese says he doesn't believe that's the case. We have had no reports through our processes of that, but Operation Sovereign Borders uh, is in place. Uh, when there was an arrival uh, there uh, last weekend, that was dealt with swiftly in accordance with our policies. There are calls for private health insurers to fund medical care at home, including chemo and dialysis. Gabrielle Hodson has more. In a pre-budget submission, Australia's largest provider of hospitals and health care has urged Canberra to force insurers to offer rebates to people who get medical treatment at home. Catholic Health Australia says there may be better outcomes for patients if they don't have to leave home for chemotherapy, dialysis, wound care, palliative care and post-surgical rehab. News Corp reports insurers are spending increasing amounts on admin and IT while overall enjoying a 50% larger profit. A Redbridge poll has also found that 82% of people would consider home care if it was offered by private insurers. This follows medical trends in the US and UK where up to one in five patients are treated at home. A tool has been developed to shore up the future of octopus populations as consumer demand for the mollusk rises. Octopus catches have doubled over recent decades. The University of South Australia's Zoe Doubleday says they've created a resource for those managing fisheries to determine the repercussions different fishing rates have on the species. But once you've got that age data, you can understand how fast an animal grows, when it reproduces or matures, and that's critical information. For instance, you don't want to be fishing out an animal before it breeds. Now turning to 5AA Sport.
Gliderol Garage Doors, adding strength, style and safety to your home. Gliderol.com.au Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Jess. Brisbane has claimed back-to-back -back wins after upsetting Melbourne by 22 points at the MCG. Charlie Cameron booted three goals, while Josh Dunkley chalked up 30 touches in Lockie Neal's 250th game. The Lions led at every change, and coach Chris Fagan says it was one of the best games they've played in a long time. We've played some good games, but that was, uh, that was a pretty special sort of effort, I think, and particularly on you know, Lockie Neal's 250th. And I've never seen us tackle so well. It dropped away a little bit in the last quarter when we got tied, but our tackling in the first three quarters was just awesome. And the action continues tonight with the Bulldogs taking on Essendon at Marvel Stadium. And the teams are out for both the Crows and Port ahead of their matches tomorrow. The Power welcome back Ollie Wines and Sam Powell Pepper, but lose Travis Boak and Jeremy Finlayson, while the Crows have brought in Will Hamill and Lockie Gallant. Let's go to golf. 15-time major champion Tiger Woods has teed off at his 26th Masters tournament. Tiger birdieing the first hole and he's now currently one under through three holes. He's six shots behind leader Bryson DeChambeau who fired a brilliant seven under round of 65. Cam Davis and Cam Smith currently the best of the Aussies sitting at four under, uh, two under rather. And Alex Demonor has beaten fellow Aussie Alexi Poprin to move into the quarter finals of the Monte Carlo Masters. And that's the 5AA Sport. Thanks Tommy. Now the 5AA forecast. See any issue firsthand with AutoCam. Real time video, direct to you from your Automasters technician. Partly cloudy and 21 today, the same again for tomorrow, cloudy and 22 for Sunday and Monday. Right now, it's 11 degrees. More news as it happens on 5AA. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. 23 to 7, David's just recovering from the sheer horror that he learnt there's a now a new friendly version of Scrabble out there that's less competitive. It's inspired Meat Tray Friday this morning. Scrabble in its purest and original form was a great argument starter. And we're asking you this morning for the Meat Tray, thanks to the team at Hayden's Family Butcher, shot 52 in Burnside Village. What's something guaranteed to start an argument? Let's go to uh, Frank in Prospect. Morning to you, Frank. Good morning, gentlemen. I thought of two topics. Monopoly. Ever oh. wondered? <laughs> <laughs> ever thought about, oh, you can't do that. Let's go to a rule. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Monopoly is <laughs> a good one. It's like an era of mean COVID board games. Oh, yeah. And COVID-19, you know, you always have no one sitting on the fence. Mm, yeah. You always have good, bad. Well, I can tell you, mate, doing a radio show, Frank, where half of our <laughs> listeners thought the border should be opened as a matter of urgency and the other half thought they should remain closed forever because we were doing so well. Try pulling off that little uh, balancing act. All right, let's go to uh, Modbury Heights. George, good morning. Uh, morning, boys. Uh, I'm thinking football and pineapple on your pizza. Oh, <laughs> pineapple on the pizza. That can, that can split families down the middle. And pizzas, indeed. <laughs> exactly right. Probably why the half and half was invented. I reckon it was. For any right. But even, even, any... even the half and half upsets me as a, as a pineapple hater. If I even get the taste of a bit of juice on my side, oh, really? my, my night is ruined. Really? I oh, hate it. Hate it. Okay. Thank you, George. Let's go to Dean and Flinders Park. Morning, Dean. Morning, boys. People on bail getting rebailed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the, this is the old that. second chance or 15th chance, as it sometimes turns out to be. Or 11th, if you're that. Actually, Dean, the only thing I would push driver. back on, who does it start yep. an argument amongst? Do you hang out with a bunch of lawyers oh, well, or judges? And no, anybody here at home watching TV, you see someone that's been caught, that they've been on bail twice before or whatever, and they go to court and they're rebailed again, you know what I mean? Like, and, and the argument is, oh, well, there isn't room for them in prison. Well, build a new prison. Yeah, why not? Yeah, thank you, Dean. There's, there's no argument on that one amongst the 5 AA breakfast audience, no, I don't think. 100%. Ben, good morning. Morning, gentlemen. Um, I've always learned in my family that nothing starts a good family argument like a good draw two or draw four in Uno. I reckon that's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people take it as almost like a personal affront, don't they? So why'd you do that that's to it. me? Ganging up on them and all sorts of stuff. It's, uh, it's hilarious. I've been, so, yeah, I've been tending to you been. since you were a child and you just played a draw four on me. <laughs> <laughs> you ungrateful little sod. I've got to say, I'm with Frank, though, Monopoly. My six- and eight-year-old 
See, the thing is, Monopoly, Monopoly is like families at their best and worst. Mm. Because the first hour is like just bliss. Everyone's having fun. Oh, I just got... I'll buy you know, it. I'll yeah. buy that. We've got the Adelaide version of Monopoly at home. And our six-year-old gets really upset if anybody else buys the Adelaide Zoo. Oh. Which is a green one. I think it's like Regent Street or Oxford, okay. Oxford Street. So we've all agreed, look, if anyone lands on the zoo, don't buy it. Because Charlie will crack it. But when it gets down to the, the the second part of the game, where you've got to start doing, you know, trades and I can't pay the rent, can I give you old Kent Road? He just used to go, no, nah, I'm not giving you anything. So we got to pay. Mm, that's, you owe, that's you owe me $200 and you've got no money. Mm. So give me that railway station. No, I'm not giving you anything. It's not what you have to. And then it just you can see the tears start and then the board pieces, there's... <laughs> You know, there's the houses have been pushed over and what? No, I'm not paying. It. It's not fair. It's not fair. What? And, and then to uh, to to um, to uh, Ben's point, um, as per the uh, the Uno scenario, it becomes mm. a how, how I thought you loved me. Yeah, it's also I thought, a- we were, I thought we were siblings and we'd always look out for each other, and now you're trying to. Take my utility or railway station off me. To hear you describe it, it sounds like a sort of a powerful and poignant entry point for the next generation to learn about the housing crisis too. Why is it fair that you, mum and dad, own all the houses and I've got well, no money to pay rent for my crappy this money? Is how, this is how people end up voting for the Greens, isn't it? <laughs> exactly right. We got a very funny text from Rob about that. Rob's on fire this morning. Uh, this is the same guy who suggested that OJ's going to be laid to rest in his Bronco. Uh, he says, guys, I bought the 2024 version of Monopoly. I've now been playing it for 48 hours straight and still can't afford a house. <laughs> <laughs> on you, Rob. For Are we ever given Rob anything? We should send him yeah. one of those flash new coffee cups. Yeah, let's do it. He's we'll a funny man. He's a regular and excellent contributor to the program. 89 years we've been putting our through Monopoly 4. It's actually older than Scrabble. Scrabble's 76 years old, and the new kid on the block is Uno, about 50 years old. Now, excitingly, I bought this at Foodland last week. There's a new version of Uno called Uno Extreme or something, and it's got all these crazy new cards in it, including a draw 10 and a draw 20. Oh, goodness. Well, that's just game over then. Yeah. Oh, no, the idea just is about. You, you go bust if you end up with more than, I think, 30 cards. Right, but it's it's specifically designed to cause maximum <laughs> family mayhem. <laughs> we haven't played it yet, so what you're saying is we've gone in a slightly different direction to Scrabble. It's good. I mm. love the idea because I reckon learning how to argue is a really important skill for kids. Absolutely. Let's go to uh, Karen. Good morning, Karen. Hi. How are you going? Good. Thanks, Karen. Good. Um, look, I can incite an argument in my family definitely by looking at my teenage daughters the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. Just that a, easy. Just a look. That's it. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll emerge the other side as functioning you, humans, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Might take a couple of years. Uh, that's good. I, I, this one on the Dutton's text line, someone said, guaranteed argument started, do you carry a handkerchief or not? Every, either side of that argument thinks the other side of it is gross. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You're not a hanky guy, no, are I'm you? not a hanky guy. Yeah, the idea of carrying around a little piece of cloth with snot on it all day mm. strikes me as completely bizarre. Yeah. But... Yeah, the hanky th- people go, you're a, you're a pig. Yeah. You haven't got a hanky. Yeah, you're walking around all day, blowing your nose and sniffing and snorting. Mm. Mm. I like this one from Peter in Brooklyn Park on the Dutton's text line, telling your older brother that he's out in backyard cricket. A good way to start an argument. Oh, yeah. I think that's why there's a general consensus you don't have LB in backyard cricket. Is there? There's no. There's an argument started. What cricket did you play? Uh, no unless you're absolutely plum. Oh, no. Nah. We, ne- we never. No, we never you had LB. Never had it. You're kidding. No. It was just too contentious. Who's going to call it? We were always, always on the bowler to call it. We, that was always, always our rule. Seriously? You just deal with it. Umpire's decision. Were you big on the backyard cricket as kids? That's all we did. Yeah, I was really annoyed. We, we used to take out A4 sheets of paper that would have... The touring test side, Every I always had to be the touring side. My brother was always Australia. And we'd go with the sides as selected in the actual games. And you had to mimic the bowling actions of the players. You had to bat in the styles of them. And we ha- we would do the whole test series. Did you have any specific Goodings local rules? We had we had pitch layouts that would sort of... This one's the whack out because it was a bit of the Seriously? end of the lawn that had the hard bit of lawn where the ball really kicked up. And the slips quarter, and you had the area that you had the SCG, which which turned more. 
where the fence was close to the edge of the pitch. So if you sort of back padded it, that was an actually that was a catch and automatic out. So we just change it based on the um, the various wickets and so forth. We used to play in the front yard at Mitchell Park, and it was great because we had a bitumen driveway. Yeah. But we had all these pine trees in the Quick Road Reserve next door, and the roots of the trees had actually created like it was really good for bowling spin. Yeah, because there were there were you could you could pitch it into the into the rough bits where the bitumen had cracked, and you'd get these excellent deviations. Get a bit of turn. I'll never forget one day because I used to play mainly with schoolmates. One day, one of my mates did a straight drive, and it went sailing across Egan Crescent at a million miles an hour, straight through Uncle Bill Schmidt's. This is B Bill mm. Schmidt, POW, mm. war hero, served in Changi, came home weighing 44 kilos, world's loveliest man, smashed his window while he was sitting there in his Jason recliner watching oh, no. TV, and he just came roaring out of the house in his dressing gown and his slippers, and he goes... Dave, oh, you bloody halfwit! <laughs> and I go, I'm so sorry, Uncle Bill. And uh, he calmed down. But the, the ball actually hit him oh. in the chair. Must and the glasses went... Poosh. Must have middled it. Oh, it was terrible. Let's go to Kensington Gardens. Bernie, good morning. Uh, good morning, boys. Look, I'm not going to add anything new to the conversation, but I just want to support your callers' um, call on the Monopoly game. Um, some 30 years ago, my... Well, we were playing with my dear late wife and daughter and, and halfway during the game it got so heated that she stood up tipped the table over <laughs> the Monopoly game went sprawling across the kitchen floor and the room fell silent so we quietly packed it up, put it in the top of the wardrobe and it was never ever ever spoken of again in the, house. <laughs> <laughs> the actual table that's that's next level Bernie not just the board, the oh, whole table that, that's it, no and the hallway in the bedroom, shut the door, and I think about three hours later emerged, and as I say, it was never, ever spoken of again. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Bernie. I think we've inadvertently stumbled upon a Metro Friday entry that wasn't necessarily being made deliberately by anyone, but someone said the correct pronunciation is Uno. No, it's, it's Uno. I think it's Uno because Uno. of Italian. It's one. Uno. Do you want to have your mind blown? You know, you know what you should say for the, the round, hard and boiled lollies on a stick that you that you lick that you suck on lollipops no chupa chups chupa chups Chup, it should be pronounced chupa chups because the verb to suck in spanish is chupar and they're invented in spain chupa chups there was a piece on news.com about it this week and i never twig i'd never twig to it how interesting should be chupa chups there you go uh it's 13 minutes to seven let's check traffic we'll take some more calls and this is a lot of fun uh things that are guaranteed to start an argument keep them coming in we'll give away that meat tray by nine o'clock this morning traffic thanks to luver house the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof thanks will and morning david all right looking really good today for friday nice way to wrap up the week simply some works you find them a dry creek got them on cormac road near churchill road today road plates in news there. Bit of activity at Eastwood to look out for. Glen Osmond Road near Fullerton Road and started to get busy at Edwardstown Cross Road near Churchill Avenue. You'll find early morning cameras, Anzac Highway, Ashford and Dawes Road at Dool Park. It's Happy Days every Friday at Ikea. Head in store to get 50% off main dishes for Ikea family members. 11am till close every Friday at Ikea. T's and C's apply. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. There's mega deals on this week at your local IGA. Like Primo Randler's Shortcut Bacon 750 gram, just $9 each. Specials across the store right now, only at IGA. Offer ends April 16. Participating stores only. Excludes local grocer and foodland. Still thinking about a sea change? Think Oakford Homes and Counter Bay. New stage released and selling fast. A variety of block sizes available in a friendly community with brand new low maintenance homes plus the beach close by. Affordable packages, no surprises. Move in now or invest for the future. Fixed price turnkey packages, flat land ready to build. Don't miss out. New stage now released. Visit our display village at Encounter Bay. Oakford Homes, a statement of quality. Oakfordhomes.com.au What's got Mike singing? Mike just got an energy efficient heat pump installed by EcoVantage. Not only is it using nearly 80% less energy than his old hot water system and saving hundreds off his power bills, he got it for free. Thanks to federal and SA government incentives, you can get your own energy efficient heat pump from just zero dollars. Pump your energy bills down with EcoVantage. Visit ecovantage.com.au 
Don't look now. Here comes Rockin' Rose. Jan, you're awful. You know she has sore feet. You sure that's her? Yes, but look at her go. Hi, Rose. You look different. New hair. New shoes. From Gilmore's. My feet feel great and I'm just walking so much better. Maybe not Rockin' Rose anymore, hey? Maybe we should call you Runnin' Rose. I think you'll need to keep up first. See you later. Jan, I think we should go to Gilmore's. Bob, I think you're right. Let's go now. Gilmore's Comfort Shoes, South Road Melrose Park, opposite Castle Plaza. When you think of single malt Scotch whisky, you might imagine Scotland's green hills, her fresh babbling brooks, and rows and rows of oak barrels. But you can get the same feeling right here in Adelaide when you walk down the aisles at Powell's. Sam and Jamie from Parafield Airport Liquor Store know every drop on the shelf. They can guide you through Scotland's best whisky labels and the best from around the globe, all under one roof. Parafield Airport Liquor Store. Pals, next to Roulette's Tavern, Kings Road, Parafield. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. 10 to 7, it is the 12th of April. Big happy birthday to Alan, who's celebrating his 40th birthday today. Alan, your wife, Beck, has dobbed you in. Uh, Alan's been listening for 10 years. Oh, we've been working here for 10 years. Started on his 30th birthday and uh, has made it all the way through to 40. So happy birthday to you, Alan. I reckon a lot of people start listening to us around that age and they Mm. sort of realise that they've grown up and don't want to hear zany FM. (laughs) There's so many fake stories about the thing that happened to me at the shopping centre that you can can stomach in your lifetime, I reckon. (laughs) That's right. There's only only so many times you can listen to, you know, Hotel California. I think we've all heard enough of that song, haven't we? Who's playing Hotel oh, California? Know. You know, that, that, the I Eagles, back man. To the, the playlists that all, were always dominated where in Adelaide it was either k San or mm. uh, Stairway to Heaven that had been the number one most played song. All right, let's head to the Weather Bureau. Uh, Mark Analak is on duty. Mark, take us through the f- rest of Friday and the weekend. Yeah, it looks like we're in for a good weekend. Today, partly cloudy conditions are forecast. A top of 21 degrees expected this afternoon. Currently sitting on 11.5 and across the metropolitan area, we can expect temperatures you know, getting up into those sort of low 20s uh, this afternoon. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 21 degrees, almost a carbon copy of today, really. And uh, Sunday, 22 degrees forecast as well. So it looks like a pretty good weekend, partly cloudy conditions, uh, but remaining fine. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Lovely stuff. Off to Saipol now. Senior Constable Rebecca Stokes joins us. So Rebecca, a man's been arrested at Crafers after a police chase. Yeah, police were called to prospect last night about 10.20pm for a domestic incident and when we located the suspect's vehicle, we attempted to pull it over, a Silver Holden station wagon. However, the driver refused to stop. Uh, luckily, Polair was overhead and tracked the vehicle as it headed south through the city and then cut across the hills to Crafers. And then just after 11pm, police successfully spiked all four of the car's tyres, bringing the car to a stop in Waverley Ridge Road, just south of the Mount Lofty <laughs> Summit roundabout. And the driver's a 42-year-old Victorian man. He's been arrested and charged with being unlawfully on premises at Prospect, failed to stop, speed dangerous and dangerous driving to escape police pursuit. He's also been issued with a 12-month instant loss of licence and his vehicle's been impounded and towed from the scene and he'll face court today. So a good result there. And uh, Rebecca, absolutely, it was a good result. Also, a, uh, a, a teen, teenager has been arrested at Salisbury. Yeah, we were called to Lode Street, Salisbury, just after 1am this morning. Uh, the victim, um, a 50-year-old, 59-year-old man, was awoken by someone in his bedroom. He's yelled out and the suspects run from the scene, stealing the victim's mobile phone. Uh, luckily, there was no injuries. The uh, police tracked the phone to Salisbury North and set up cordons in the area after seeing the suspect running in the back streets. We also called in PD Chaos to assist, and Chaos tracked the suspect to a rear yard of a home in Farley Grove. I hear the suspect was spooked by PD Chaos's barking. He's made a run for it to Downton Avenue, but straight into the waiting arms of a northern patrol. And in his possession, police allegedly found a knife and a number of credit cards not in the teen's name. We were also able to track that mobile phone back later to a school oval at Salisbury North, so we're able to return that to the victim. There's a 16-year-old Port Perry South boy who's been arrested and charged with aggravated serious criminal trespass, theft, carry offensive weapon, unlawful possession and two counts of breach of bail. And he'll appear in the Elizabeth Youth Court today. Good stuff, Rebecca. Senior Constable Rebecca Stokes from Sapol. Have a great weekend. All right, let's uh, head out on the road and catch up with Jade Robran, who's cruising the streets in her Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace, searching for breaking news, all thanks to Dutton's Volkswagen. Morning to you, Jade. 
Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Well, we know Gather Round is done and dusted for another year, and while the crowd was well behaved, same can't be said for those on our roads. SAPOL launched Operation Gather from Wednesday before Gather Round until the Sunday, focusing on the Fatal Five. Now, I've just been crunching down the stats, and here's the breakdown. There were 15 serious injuries as a result of road trauma on our roads during the operation. Sadly, three lives were lost in that horror head-on truck collision on the Air Highway west of Utala about 6.45am on the Thursday of the 4th of April. Police detected 908 speeding offences, 28 seatbelt offences and 93 drivers distracted by their mobile phones. Now, a total of 358 dangerous driving offences were detected such as misuse of a car, failing to comply with signage, giving away, lighting and lane behaviour. Now, as a result of the operation, 97 cars were impounded, 71 people were issued with an immediate loss of licence. And uh, this is where it gets somewhat scary. Police detected 49 drivers with a blood alcohol reading over the legal limit, with 60 drivers tested positive to drug driving. Now, here's just a few of the morons. A 51-year-old Glen Gowry, woman sideswiping the wall of a liquor store drive through at Glenelg. She recorded a blood alcohol reading of 0.228. A 60-year-old Port Augusta man failed to stop at a stop sign at about 3 p.m. on the 4th in Port Augusta West. Now, no learner plates were displayed, no qualified supervising driver. He returned a blood alcohol reading of 0.128. Then another two men were caught drink driving during the same incident at Lockleys when a car hit a tree. Now, the driver, he was 27. He recorded a blood alcohol reading of 0.197. Then his mate rocked up. He recorded a blood alcohol reading of 0.092. Then finally, a 21-year-old man from Salisbury Downs. He was detected travelling at, get this, 152 clicks in a 60-kilometre zone at about 9pm on the 3rd at Edinburgh. Now, he was reported for extreme speed. Superintendent Darren Filkey, now he heads up, he's the officer in charge of the traffic services branch. He said, overall, we're pleased with the driving behaviours of those attending the Gather Round Games. But still, when highlighted like that, guys, still extremely risky just mm. to even get in your car as a sober person every day, isn't it? Well, for sure. And, you know, you, you, you think about the selfishness that those people are displaying and the police must just tear their hair out with it, you know, same Recidivist halfwits out there doing it over and over. Good on you, Jade. Thank you for that. The um, Tiffany, I didn't know this, Tiffany texted in on the Dutton's line saying, here's a fun fact about Chubba Chups. The Chubba Chups logo was designed in 1969 by the Spanish surrealist artist Salvador Dali. <laughs> Is that right? I just checked it out online. No way. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's true. I had no idea. But you think about it. The, the, it's a bespoke typeface that he invented, and it's got that sort of swirliness yeah, that you associate with um, sense. Dali with his melting clocks and all the rest of it. But no, um, the uh, the company that, that owns it, uh, that owns Chubba Chubs, so it was a Spaniard called Enrique Bernat. So in 1958, he, he made, he invented the Chubba Chub, and it's now owned by an Italian company. They also own um, Mentos. Well, there you go. There you go. The uh, What about that? Lolly Empire. Thanks, Tiffany. 90 seconds away from the 5 AA News. After 7, we're off to the US. We'll bring you up to speed with the uh, big developing story there overnight that OJ Simpson has died after a, a battle with cancer. We'll also get you across some of the local stories. And we're going to take a heap more Meat Tray Friday calls because there's a lot of people that have got uh, nominations for things that instantly and are guaranteed to start an argument. That's next. Being an ex can be a good thing. The X in X Service People stands for extraordinary assets, reliable employees who make exceptional leaders and are extremely skilled. Exemplary workers with dedication and an excellent work ethic. Exactly what your organisation needs. Explore more at veteransemployment.gov.au Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Easy, settle down. Who are you? Jack the Crack. Whoa, nice straight walls you've got there. What are you doing? Messing up your house, compromising its integrity. Why? See that little crack there in the corner? 
That's all I needed. Then step aside, please. Don't let cracks ruin your home. Adelaide Screw Piling will underpin your foundation, saving you thousands. Fully licensed, servicing all suburbs. Go to adelaidescrewpiling.com.au In tough times, it's the simple things that make a big difference. Like $19 schnitzel days at the Birkenhead Tavern, Excelsior and the Lighthouse Wharf. We know the humble schnitty can't fix all our problems, but we do know it'll put a smile on your dial. $19 schnitty, Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at the Birkenhead Tavern, Excelsior and the Lighthouse Wharf. Making the world a better place, one schnitty at a time. Got to start somewhere. You just know it's a Barrow Hotel. The latest local, national and international news for South Australia. This is 5AA News, always Adelaide. 21 and partly cloudy today with the 7 o'clock news, I'm Jess Adamson. Injured or living with chronic pain? Book an appointment at Physio Extra today. Six locations. PhysioExtra.com OJ, OJ Simpson, the NFL and Hollywood star who fell from grace after being accused of double murder, has died at the age of 76. Simpson was acquitted of the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Simpson-Brown, and her friend in a highly publicised trial in 1995. Several years later, he was found liable for their deaths in a civil lawsuit and later spent nine years in prison for armed robbery. Carl E. Douglas was one of OJ's defence attorneys during the murder trial. He says he leaves behind a complex legacy. There's an entire generation that the only thing they know about O.J. Simpson is that he was accused of a double murder. They do not know that he was a college star, that he was a pro football star, and that he became an, a commercial icon. The state government's chipped in $100,000 to help restore the bus at the centre of iconic Australian film Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and bring it back to South Australia. Previously thought lost, the 1976 freighter bus was discovered in a paddock in New South Wales where she weathered the elements, including narrowly avoiding bushfires and floods for 16 years. Priscilla is now based in Queensland where the restoration will take place before residing at the National Motor Museum in Birdwood. A pilot study into cashless gambling has found people who signed up to it rarely used it. Gabrielle Hodson has more. The evaluation of a cashless gambling pilot has found that of the 260 people who took part, fewer than 20 use the technology all the time. As SMH The Age reports, gamblers preferred prepaid tickets or cold hard cash over the new digital wallet to Bluetooth tech designed by poker machine maker Aristocrat. Reasons included privacy fears, lack of incentive and not being able to use a favourite machine. A limit setting function was also used by just 10 people. Cashless gaming was a key recommendation after a New South Wales Crime Commission inquiry into money laundering in pubs and clubs. Reports from the US claim the latest peace deal between Israel and Hamas collapsed because all of the hostages being held in Gaza are dead. Israel has demanded the return of at least 40 captives if there's to be a pause in fighting. The United States fears Hamas may not have may not have enough live hostages to secure a deal that leads to a ceasefire. Australians are being told to look out for symptoms of meningococcal over the cooler months. The disease infects the lining of the brain and can result in long-term disability, limb loss, even death. Children under two and young adults are most at risk. The University of Notre Dame's Head of General Practice, Dr Charlotte Hespy, says it can mirror the flu. Because it lives in noses and throats, it can be spread through coughing, sneezing, living in close quarters with each other. So it is an infection that can be spread just between people who live close together but also acquaintances. Bringing back the polywaffle was a promise made by local company Men's in 2019 and today they deliver with the first product hitting the shelves. Phil Sims from Men's says they decided to give the bar a makeover and sell it as a bag of polywaffle bites. We then sort of moved towards the strategy of bringing back all the marshmallow and, and wafer and chocolate and, and the unique and nostalgic mix of and the memories of all that being brought together but, but in a shareable form so people can actually share that around in, in a bite size as a to, uh, now turning to 5AA Sports. 
colours, custom design, any house, any style. Gliderol Garage Doors. Gliderol.com.au. Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Jess. Let's start with footy. Brisbane has put itself back in the frame for the season following an impressive 22-point win against Melbourne at the MCG. It's the Lions' second straight win and has them sitting in ninth spot with a 2-3 and three record. The round continues tonight with the Bulldogs up against Essendon. Well, live golfer Bryson DeChambeau has taken the clubhouse lead in a rain-delayed first round at the Masters. Graham Agars reports from Augusta. The long-hitting DeChambeau began with three birdies in a row and then birdie three of the last four to post a 7-under 65 on the rain-softened Augusta National Course. He leads by three from former Masters champion Danny Willett, who posted an opening 68. Cameron Davis is the best Aussie at 3-under after a front nine 33. Fellow Aussie Cameron Smith is just one further back midway through his round at 2-under. Let's go to tennis. Alex Demonor has set up a mouth-watering clash with Novak Djokovic in the quarterfinals of the Monte Carlo Masters. That's after he claimed a straight sets win against fellow Aussie Alexi Popperin in their match overnight. Formula One driver Fernando Alonso has signed a new deal to stay with Aston Martin for the next two seasons. And it's been a bad morning for the English clubs in quarterfinal action of the Europa League. Liverpool losing 3-0 at home in the opening leg of their tie against Atalanta, while West Ham also lost 2-0 against Bayer Leverkusen. In this morning's other matches, it was Roma with a 1-0 victory against AC Milan, while Benfica took care of Marseille 2-1. And that's the 5AA Sport. Thanks, Tom. Now checking 5AA traffic. Lynn Andrews Real Estate. Experts in commercial and residential property management. LynnAndrews.com.au Morning there. Looking pretty good for the driving today. No great hassles, which is excellent. Got some road plates in use at Dry Creek. However, you'll find them in Churchill Road near Cormac Road. Speeds at 40. Work support Adelaide today. Bow Road near Causeway Road. And getting slow at Richmond for activity as well. South Road near Deacon Avenue. Busy. Bryce at Road at Glenelg East with cameras Anzac Highway, Ashford. And Doors Road at Door Park. North East Auto Group is having their first ever car sale with massive savings on cars, utes and SUVs. Starts Saturday in Burton, Hampstead Gardens and Port Augusta. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Now the 5AA forecast. See any issue firsthand with AutoCam. Real-time video, direct to you from your Automaster's technician. Partly cloudy and 21 today. Tomorrow is just the same. 22 and cloudy for Sunday and Monday. Right now it's 12 degrees. More news as it happens on 5AA. There are electrical safety recalls on solar home batteries, branded LG, LG Chem and inside some Solax products. Affected batteries may overheat and catch fire, resulting in injury, death or damage to property. Incidents have occurred and caused damage to property. Even if you have checked before, please check again by visiting lghomebattery.com.au or by calling 1300 677 273. That's 1300 677 273. In Adelaide and across South Australia, this is 5AA. Always Adelaide. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. Eight minutes after seven, some good news this morning. Sapol have caught up with at least one of the dropkicks who robbed Stacey Lee's place and a heap of other houses right across Adelaide. They were, they were pretty busy. Uh, this bunch. So we're going to talk to Stacey shortly, get a sense of she is she any closer to getting any of her stuff back, what kind of involvement she had with police and the investigation. But some good news this morning it does sound like at least one of them has been um, has been apprehended by police. So that is an excellent development. We'll have more good on work. that in just a moment. Also, Michael Packey in the nation's capital after 7.30, wrapping the last week in federal politics. What's the fallout been of the Prime Minister's announcement yesterday of the Made in Australia Act? It seems to have divided the business community. I reckon our listeners probably largely think it's a good idea, but if you've got an alternate point of view, text in on 0408081395. Peter Dutton put his mouth in it pretty badly too with some stupid comments that he made about uh, Port Arthur and uh, keen to hear from Michael Packey about that because it was a quite a 
Mm. Foot, foot in mouth moment for the alternative Prime Minister. We'll get into that after 7.30 uh, but good luck trying to find space on the text line or indeed the phone board this morning because Dimitri <laughs> Friday has just gone bananas. Uh, Mitre, thanks to Hayden's Family Butcher Shop 52 in Burnside Village. We're asking you what's something that's guaranteed to start an argument? They've changed the rules of Scrabble and made it Less of an argument starter, um, but in its purest form, it was the all-time greatest answer to this question. But what else? What else is guaranteed to start an argument? We've had spelling, we've had pronunciations, we've had... Uh, sauce in the of, fridge or the pantry. Sauce in the fridge or pantry, pizza toppings, you name it, we've heard it in the first hour. Uh, what else have you got, folks? Eight double two three double o double o. Let's start our news wrap of the morning with um, a big story out of the US that broke overnight. Tim Lester is in California covering the death of OJ Simpson. Tim, good morning to you. Morning, guys. So, Tim, this came as a bit of a surprise. I don't think anyone had any idea, obviously, apart from his immediate family, that he was even sick. That's right. Apparently suffering uh, prostate cancer at home in Las Vegas, but uh, but died. And the first confirmation that the wider world had came from his family, saying he died peacefully with them and asking for some uh, some space to grieve the loss of their dad. But he was... Such an extraordinary figure and a divisive figure in so many ways uh, that the world will want time to take stock of O.J. Simpson. Yeah, I, I don't think there's too many people in Australia who are going to be getting the violins out for him too much. I mean, whatever his achievements were as, a, as an athlete and then as an actor, they were well and truly overshadowed by the brutality he displayed towards his ex-wife and her new partner. Yes, and and Australians really didn't come to know him until the mid-90s when the allegations of murder burst onto the scene and we saw that incredible uh, car chase, non-car chase in many respects, to arrest him in Los Angeles and then the nine months of just extraordinary trial uh, that led to his acquittal that many didn't accept. Uh, and, uh, of course, a civil trial ultimately would declare that he was responsible for those murders. So here we are 30 years on, and there really is still no determination as to whether he was a hard-done-by sportsman or a killer. That debate, America being the country that it is, Tim, split pretty heavily down race lines, didn't it, where a lot of the people who were supporting him were African-American, a lot of the people who said he was a, a, a cold-blooded killer were from the white community. I mean, it's not, not that clear-cut. I'm sure there were plenty of people of colour as well who, who, who thought the man was a, a disgrace. But do you think that in his death, the same debate or the same approach to the discussion will, will re-emerge in America, where you'll get some people who are still flying the flag for him and others are saying, you know, rotten hell? I think so. I think so. And it, 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 he, he, in a sense, um, brought many of the issues of the two Americas to light Long before, uh, long before all of the, the um, race riots and and Black Lives Matter, uh, we saw it at play. In fact, many of those who were looking on the mid nineties trial and saying that's a disgrace, the bloodstains and the rest proved his guilt, also said that what happened was there was a black jury, largely mm. in the Los Angeles trial, and they ex accepted that the police were rotten to the core, white police officers, and, and wouldn't, uh, wouldn't accept their case. Yeah, well, not long after the, the Rodney King trial, which was the one that started all the riots in LA too. Uh, great report, as always, Tim. Tim Lester there in California for the 7 News US Bureau. What about this text from Marie? Uh, she says, Years ago, I was staying in a Los Angeles hotel, having what I hope would be a quiet drink before retiring. We were rudely interrupted by a loud group at the bar, there was one guy who had women all over him. They were all swearing and laughing. Eventually, he came over and apologised for their behaviour. And I said to him, look, frankly, it is out of order. But when I left, I said to the barman, is that who I think it is? And he said, yep, that's OJ Simpson. No He's a friend way. of the owner, so he does what he likes. I said, oh, my God, I've just spoken to a murderer. That is unbelievable. What a text. I, wow. never, I did not think we would have a listener that's met OJ Simpson. Yeah. Didn't even or had a night ruined by him. Occur to put out the uh, put out the call. That's remarkable. Yeah, great story.
Uh, thank you. Well, it was Marie, was it, on the Dutton yeah, Marie. Line. Yeah, thank you, Marie. Uh, all right, um, let's catch up with our uh, magnificent afternoons uh, announcer and um, regular Monday morning contributor, Stacey Liu, who uh, fell victim to a burglary uh, last week that uh, I think, thanks to her excellent uh, camera technology she's got at her house, uh, two people have now been apprehended, two people that are responsible not just for robbing her place, but a whole bunch of them. Stacey, good morning to you. Uh, this, this sounds like oh, terrific nice. news. Um, are you any closer to getting any of your stuff back? Yeah, we've had um, a chat with police and have had to go in and identify some items and it was, th there was a lot, there was a lot of stuff that these people had, a lot of stolen items. So it looks like from initial look, some of my stuff's there, not all of it, um, but there was so much more than just my stuff. So hopefully it's good news for other people too because, yeah, as you say, have a look at that list of what these people have allegedly done we've got to say that now because they're in court um but five houses i think i counted yeah, that they broke into allegedly four stolen cars i mean <laughs> how have they been getting away with it for so long well i'll say brazen as well Stace. that that video yeah. that you've shared we posted it again now on the um facebook live stream but um so they've got two of them are there ages on them do you, or do you have a rough ballpark age do you know have you got that sort of intel yeah, yeah, the, there was one man who's been remanded in custody, so he's behind bars, which is good news. He's in his 40s, um, no fixed address. And then there's a woman in her 20s. Um, I don't have her suburb on me, um, but she is allegedly the one who used... Uh, my mum had a bank card stolen from our house and they went and used it. Um, I think they went and bought some ciggies from a servo or something, apparently. Um, so, yeah, apparently she's the one who used that. Was well, that how they caught them? I don't know the details. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but all I know is the the coppers have done a really good job with this acting so quickly. Obviously, it's been a week since mine, but mm. clearly a longer time since the ones that happened before me. And I think there was even a chase involved. When they found one of the stolen cars, they sort of blockaded them into a house. Um, and as they tried to leave the house, uh, they rammed a police car. And I know there was a um, an officer that was involved in chasing one of them down a street. So, yeah, big to the Adelaide Volume Crime Team. I know they were working until the early hours of the morning a couple nights ago to try and get these two locked up. What kind of um, interaction do you have with police after the fact? Do they keep you abreast of the investigation and the, the, the status of whether they think they've caught everyone or are you reading it in the paper like everyone else? Um, I have been in touch with them probably more so than than reading it in the media but still as you can imagine because it's now before the courts and I know they've got to put a case together you know having been a court reporter before I know what it's like they've, they've made an arrest but now they need to actually dot the I's and cross the T's. So that's also why I don't want to say too much because I want these people to, you know, get the full sentence that they can from the court. So I don't want to say anything wrong now and I think the police don't want to tell me anything yeah. that they can't yeah. tell me because, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I we all want to make sure these people get the appropriate sentence for what they've done and, and hopefully the courts do their job now. Well, Stace, I promise I'll break the habit of a lifetime and not say anything intemperate or prejudicial because <laughs> as, a, as a beloved colleague of ours, I'd hate to be the one who caused the mistrial. So so let's Thanks, Dave. Declare Appreciate them in it. Innocent till proven guilty. <laughs> of course. Always. Thank you, Stacey. Great to have Thanks, some good guys. News. Cheers, Stacey. Uh, on that front, and for everyone that was a victim of, uh, or alleged victim, obviously, of uh, the people that have been arrested. Yeah, it was such an amazing story. And I think it was really good of Stacey to tell it because it's, it's one of those things like it's not about her as a journo making herself the story. The story itself is so relatable for a lot of people. Mm. I would have people listening right now and, and people who listen to Stacey's show in the afternoons who would go, that, that's my story. You know, like everyone who's been robbed knows that sense of having your privacy invaded and then not feeling secure in your home afterwards. But the, the key to feeling secure again is the fact that, to their great credit, Sopol have, have got them. Uh, we've got a meat tray to give away on this uh, Friday morning. Thanks to Chris and the team at Hayden's Family Butcher Shop 52 in Burnside Village. We're asking you uh, to uh, nominate a topic, subject, question, uh, whatever it might well be, that is guaranteed to start an argument. Phil in Henley Beach is on the line. Morning to you, Phil. Morning. I just know how she feels having had a car stolen in the past. Mm. Um, guaranteed to start an argument is called marriage. 
<laughs> just generally, just get have a marriage starts arguments. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose maybe uh, one exception might be my, my dear old parents. Let's let's say so. They were married for sixty four years, and I never saw them have an argument. But um, wow, that's pretty weird. We've, we've, I've been now married for uh, 39 years next month, and um, we've had a few over the years. Yeah. But we're, yeah. Yeah. They say, Phil, never go to bed angry. Um, that was, uh, I think, a few over 39 years. It's not too bad a track record, Phil. Don't beat mm. yourself about it just because your parents were um, they were one out of the box. Let's go to Thebert and Sam. Good morning. Morning, boys. Um, what would start an argument is, I remember as a kid, we'd go to our rally's house and there'd be the old, older generation playing briskola. You know what that is, the card game. What's it anyway, called, briskola? Briskola. You know, they're playing teams. Right. Or, or they'll play Scorpa. It's an Italian card game. Anyway, they'd be drinking beer, wine. Anyway, somebody gets caught cheating and all oh, hell breaks loose. <laughs> they'd be screaming and carrying on. And, you're never, and then the wives would have to break it up and then they'd fight with the wives. I, Sounds like a scene out of Goodfellas. I do like that, irrespective of cultural background, it seems like games that were devised to bring families together invariably end up in everyone having a fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scrabble, yeah. Monopoly. Briskola. Briskola. Let's go to Tranmere. James, Canasta. good morning. Hey, James. Yeah, this, this is a guaranteed one. You tell your wife you've lost weight. <laughs> what, you've lost weight? No, she's lost weight. Oh, Okay. Oh, oh, have you been why doesn't she take that as a compliment? Yeah. Woman? What's r- have you been seeing another woman? Mm. Okay. Bit of a... Not sure. Bit of mistrust going on there. <laughs> not sure about that one, James. <laughs> <laughs> one good way to start an argument in my house is me to say, geez, I reckon John Howe was a good Prime Minister. Yeah. And that gets things going. Yeah, I imagine that's... <laughs> that's a night on the couch for you, that <laughs> that's one. That's right. Off to a SCG number two, as I like to call the spare room. <laughs> <laughs> 21 after 7, uh, we're going to check traffic in a moment. Wayne Miller is going to be on the program to uh, talk about his debut on the weekend. He will be debuting in the 5AA commentary position. This is big. Spe- special comments. This is it's a great insight because you don't often get people who, um, I mean, if he wasn't, if he was fit, he's out there playing. This is You don't get more contemporary analysis than someone who's literally in the game right now. So I, I cannot wait for tomorrow. I think it's going to be fascinating. We're going to talk about how he's feeling ahead of it uh, in just a few moments' time. Let's check traffic first. Thanks to Luva House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. Thanks, Will. At Dry Creek, urgent works with road plates in use on Churchill Road near Cormac Road. Got speeds at 40 heading outbound. Works at Largs North, Victoria Road near Rush Street and slow for activity at Eastwood this morning. Glen Osmond Road near Fullerton Road, speeds at 40. Getting busy, Brighton Road, Brighton with a camera Anzac Highway at Ashford. Start your Next adventure with a bonus three year Subaru cap price service plan on selected Subaru models. Offer ends April 30 at your local Subaru retailer. T's and C's apply. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. 5AA mornings with Matthew Pantelis. Michael's called in from Banksia Park. After yesterday, you were discussing law and order in South Australia. I went on the SA Police website and I looked at their statistics and I was quite horrified. Homicide and related issues, that's gone up 51%. Murder's gone up 69%. Matthew Pantelis. Aggravated robbery went up 19%. Who's responsible, Matthew? Weekday mornings from 9 on 5AA. Always Adelaide. Hi, I'm Lynn Andrews. For over 50 years, the Lynn Andrews team have made it easy for landlords to manage residential and commercial property. From single homes to multiple commercial holdings, our passion for property investment means we have a great deal of knowledge. How to do it safely and properly. Matching the right tenant with the right property every time. We're here to help you. Visit lynnandrews.com.au Ignition for men. Adelaide's home of luxury menswear offer an impeccable range of suits by leading Italian brands, including tailor-made wedding packages for the groom and groomsmen. Order three tailor-made suits and pay just $799 for each. Order four or more for just $749 each. Phenomenal value for a quality tailor-made suit. See Ignition for Men for tailor-made wedding packages. 54 Paynham Road, Stepney. Ignitionformen.com.au T's and C's apply. City Discount Time. Get saving this month at City Discount Tires. 
When you buy three Falcon CT60 tyres, you'll get the fourth tyre free. The perfect tyre for crossovers such as Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4. City Discount Tyres are a proud multi-tyre and wheel brand retailer offering great service at great prices. Visit citydiscounttires.com.au to find your nearest store. City Discount Tyres. We're driven by value. City Discount Tyres. Since I got these new shoes from Gilmore's, I can do even more dance moves. Here, hold my phone. Oh, Grandma, do we have to do this here? Oh, don't be silly. The light is great. I've got more than 80 followers, you know. You're out with an influencer. My Grandma the Influencer. Just wow. Well, you can thank Gilmore's for that. My followers love seeing the new shoes I've bought. I know. I've read some of the comments. Actually pretty good. I told you I'm trending. Ugh. Gilmore's Comfort Shoes, South Road Melrose Park opposite Castle Plaza. The Kluger 7-seat SUV is here to move your family and to move you at Jarvis Toyota's brand new home in Brighton Road, Somerton Park. It's an SUV that knows you expect practicality but want luxury and beautiful design too. There's no need to wait for the kids to grow up. You can have your dream car now. Take a test drive of the Kluger SUV today at Jarvis Toyota. Now at Brighton Road, Somerton Park. Proudly celebrating 22 years of great deals. Rosanna Mangiarelli here from 7 News. Join me and Will Goodings for Adelaide's leading news hour, 7 News, tonight at 6 o'clock. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5 AA Breakfast. 25 minutes after 7. Hundreds upon hundreds of texts on the Dutton's text line coming through. People with guaranteed argument starters. Some of them are very, very funny. Dutton's Mitsubishi, the new gen Triton, has landed. A book your test drive today. Dutton's easy to do business with. Craig in Hove says, argument starter, any port supporter talking to Stephen Rowe? <laughs> who, yeah, but who's starting that argument? Well, more often than not, probably Rowie. Rowie. Jeez, they love, port supporters love to ring in and rile him up, though. It's I like this sport. one. Asking Port supporters how many premierships they've won. <laughs> <laughs> Which club are you talking about? Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, That's the argument starter, right? I know. Here. Nicole in Parafield Garden says, good way to start an argument. It's trying to get a nice family photo with the kids. That's true. Stop pulling faces. Yeah. Just look, this is for Grandma, okay? It's for a birthday. <laughs> Just everyone, stop poking your tongue out, Charlie. <laughs> stop doing devil horns behind your brother's head. <laughs> There's fertile ground in a subcategory of um, guaranteed argument that appears to be what goes in the fridge. Uh, <laughs> Denny in Hallett Cove says, um, My husband insists chocolate should be kept in the fridge. I say it definitely should not. He obviously doesn't want to taste the full flavour. Thank you, Denny. See, the choc I'm, I'm with her husband, though. I'm with Denny's husband. Oh, no, I like I'm, it in the fridge. I'm with Denny. I don't want it in the fridge. Yeah, but it tastes a bit too when it's when it's room temperature. But the purists say you should have a room temperature. You don't even eat chocolate, though. I, I eat one piece of dark chocolate a night, just one. One square. A night? Mm. Every night? Every like night. Like a nightcap? One. Yeah, it's a little thing. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sounds a bit mental, doesn't it? A bit OCD. <laughs> yeah. I won't eat, won't eat more than one, just one. But I have to have one. You have an excellent routine in life. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, what about Vegemite? Where do you keep the Vegemite? In the pantry. Yes, Where else same. do you keep it? Some people refrigerate it. No. Yeah. What Believe way? it or not. I don't know. There's nothing in that can go bad. That's going to well, be the equivalent you know? of... What, what is in it? That's <laughs> going to be the equivalent of finding honey in an Egyptian tomb in about 2,000 didn't they, years. Didn't they find honey that's still edible? Yeah, they did. And they'll find Vegemite when aliens come down on Earth after we've blown ourselves up. And they'll go, what the hell was this? Lucy says the, the only product that never expires is honey. Yeah, we should put some Vegemite in a time capsule. Mm. For future generations. <laughs> exactly. That's a good idea. <laughs> Not our new alien overlords arrive. They'll have something to put on their toast. Uh, we're going to keep those uh, keep those calls coming right through to 9 o'clock before we award the meat trade. It's going to be tough this morning. So many great uh, argument starters have come through. 8223 0000 is the number. Or you can text us the Dutton's text line or simply jump on the Foodland Supermarkets Facebook and YouTube live stream. Pronunciations is a big one. We've had mm. a lot of texts. We have one. Apparently I mispronounced Salisbury. 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 Anyway. Salisbury. Yes, uh, Andrew picked me up on that. And then the other one, Lego. Yeah, I know. That's on our list. That's, that is on our list, yeah. Because you wrongly think it should be Lego. <laughs> no, I just think it's how yeah, the company says it should be how you say it. <laughs> That's such a Eurocentric view. <laughs> 
you're, you're a you're a, a remainer, aren't you? Yeah, that's that's me. A big EU guy. <laughs> I just hit him being Nigel Farage. <laughs> I'll pronounce Lego however I want to pronounce Lego. It's my God-given right as an Australian. He would say Lego for the record. Uh, 29 after 7, 5 AA News is coming up. Uh, in a moment, Michael Packey will uh, join us and we'll wrap the week in federal politics. Having access to reliable healthcare services gives us all peace of mind. Too many South Australians living hundreds of kilometres from Adelaide have a local hospital that doesn't have enough nurses or midwives. Frightening? Without state government action, we won't have the nurses and midwives needed to keep our regional hospitals running. Support those who care for us at regionalincentives.com.au Authorised by Ida Bars, ANMF, SA Branch, Ridleyton. Hey, you in the car. If your next service is due, just remember that Mawson Lakes Master has your back. We'll take care of you with next day servicing, complimentary loan car, vacuum and wash, and your breakfast or lunch is on us. Your car gets the love too, with our state-of-the-art service centre brimming with top train mechanics. At Mawson Lakes Mazda, we'll look after your car and look after you. Mawson Lakes Mazda, just a short drive from the city. If you're dreaming of discovering the wonders of the world in comfort and style, then look no further than Trafalgar Tours, Insight Vacations and Phil Hoffman Travel. We love Phil. Here's a great reason to book your next holiday. Save up to 15% on select worldwide tours in 2024, including Europe with Trafalgar and Insight Vacations, plus exclusive savings of up to $400 per couple when you book with Phil Hoffman Travel. Goes without saying, Trafalgar and Insight Vacations deliver the must-see and local secrets with unique and delicious dining experiences, premium hotel accommodation and the ability to connect with charismatic locals on tour. So make your dream holiday a reality with Trafalgar and Insight Vacations. This truly is a special way to see the world. Offer ends April 30. Contact Phil Hoffman Travel or visit their website, phd.com.au. This is 5AA News. Always Adelaide. 21 and partly cloudy today with the 7.30 News, I'm Jess Adamson. Everybody is unique. Let the Physio Extra team take care of your specific needs. PhysioExtra.com NFL star and acquitted double murderer OJ Simpson has died after being diagnosed with prostate cancer. He was found not guilty of murder following a highly publicised murder trial which garnered media attention from the moment he led police on a two-hour car chase. News helicopter pilot Bob Turr followed the car chase from above and says it stopped the nation. It was an incredible sight. Thousands of people lined up along the side of the road waving and trying to give OJ Simpson support. And what we were watching on live television was almost like a funeral for a fallen friend. Simpson was later found liable for the deaths of his ex-wife and her friend and in 2007 was sentenced to jail time for armed robbery and kidnapping. He was 76. A teenager has been arrested after a home invasion at Salisbury overnight. A 59-year-old man was woken by someone in his house in Lode Street just after 1am. Senior Constable Rebecca Stokes says police dog Chaos was called in to find the offender. Chaos tracked the suspect to a rear yard of a home in Farley Grove. The suspect was spooked by a pity Chaos's barking. He's made a run for it to Downton Avenue, but straight into the waiting arms of a northern patrol. And in his possession, police allegedly found a knife and a number of credit cards not in the team's name. We were also able to track that mobile phone back later to a school oval, so we were able to return that to the victim. The 16-year-old Port Pirie South boy has been charged with aggravated serious criminal trespass, theft, carry an offensive weapon, unlawful possession and two counts of breach of bail. Long-serving President of the Police Association, Mark Carroll, has confirmed his retirement. He'll formally step down on the 5th of July after 16 years in the role. One thing I still believe after nearly 40 years is that policing is a great career, even though it has and has always had its difficulties. The compelling issues right now are retention and recruitment, which I'm sure will be front of mind for my successor, as will the coming round of enterprise bargaining. Controversial Madam Stormy Summers will be laid to rest today. She passed away last month after a short illness, age 77. Her funeral at Centennial Park this afternoon is open to the public. The service will be held in the Heysen Chapel starting at 3.30. Friends say it will be a fitting celebration of her life. 
COVID case numbers are easing, but Australians are still being warned not to become complacent about the risks. Federal Department of Health data shows there were no deaths associated with the virus during one week of March. The number of hospital admissions are also dwindling at their lowest level since January 2022. Epidemiologist Professor Adrian Esterman says an annual vaccination is still recommended, despite there being very little messaging from governments. Only 30% of over 75s are up to date with their booster shot. So we have this vulnerable group who unfortunately aren't up to date with their booster shots. I think that's the big worry. And I would like to see our, our governments around Australia and our federal government at least get some messaging out to elderly people to protect themselves. A curtain raiser with a difference before the Reds at Hindmarsh tonight. The second annual SA Produce Charity Match is happening, raising funds for the Rural Business Support Relief Fund. Charity campaign manager Penny Reedy says it's fun for a cause. We've got the Pick a Local Pick SA team, which is made up of industry wholesalers, retailers, growers, industry people, versus the government. We're starting at 4.45 down at Hindmarsh Stadium as a curtain raiser to the Adelaide United game. Now turning to 5AA Sports. Gliderol Garage Doors. Adding strength, style and safety to your home. Gliderol.com.au Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Jess. Let's start with a bit of footy. Melbourne's Christian Salem will have scans after a hamstring injury saw the defender subbed out in the first quarter of last night's 22-point loss to Brisbane. Demons coach Simon Goodwin says they were simply outplayed. Uh, yeah, frustrating is one word, but, you know, we just got beaten by a very good team. Um... You know, they beat us in all phases of the game and you know, they were stronger, they were cleaner, they transitioned the ball better and they defended better. So that makes the game pretty tough. Let's go to golf world number one, Scotty Scheffler. He's off to a brilliant start as he looks to add another green jacket to his impressive resume. The 27-year-old American is currently six under with a hole to play, putting him only one shot behind fellow American Bryson DeChambeau, who's already in the clubhouse at seven under. Cam Davis is currently the best of the Aussies at two under, while Cam Smith is just a shot further back at one under. To soccer, Liverpool has lost its first game at Anfield since February in 2023, going down 3-0 to Italian club Atalanta in the first leg of their Europa League quarter-final. Look at Pacilic on the run. Skamaka plays it through for Edison. And there's Pacilic. 3-0 Atalanta. It just got a whole lot more unbelievable. Audio there thanks to Stan Sport and there was one game in the NRL overnight with the Sydney Roosters 22 to 20 point winners against the Newcastle Knights. And that's the 5AA Sport. Thanks Tom. Now checking 5AA traffic. Lynn Andrews Real Estate. Experts in commercial and residential property management. LynnAndrews.com.au Morning there. Roads looking good for the drive-in today. No great hassles, which is excellent. It works at Dry Creek to look out for. Road plates in use there. Churchill Road near Cormac Road. Also some activity at Lonsdale this morning. You'll find that Dyson Road near O'Sullivan's Beach Road and Sluggish at Port Adelaide. Bow Road near Causeway Road. Got cameras. Barrow Money Drive, Hello Cove and Bradley Grove at Mitchell Park. Is it time to level up your business? For a limited time, ABN holders can access national fleet pricing on Renault Traffic Van. T's and C's apply. Drive away today. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Now the 5AA forecast. See any issue firsthand with AutoCam. Real-time video, direct to you from your AutoMasters technician. Partly cloudy and 21 today. A carbon copy tomorrow, cloudy and 22 for both Sunday and Monday. Right now it's 13 degrees. More news as it happens on 5AA. For those whose pool is the main feature of their yard, Walco offer a special mesh cover to keep debris and leaves out while making your pool area look stunning all through winter. Join the great cover-up and ask Walco about their stylish new mesh pool covers. Walco.com.au 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5 AA Breakfast. 22 minutes to 8. Michael Packy in a moment from uh, 9 Radio. We'll uh, wrap a big, big week in federal politics in the end. When you imagine everything that happened from 
uh, the Penny Wong Two State Solution comments to the announcement yesterday of the uh, the uh, Made in Australia Future um, uh, policy from the federal government. There's lots to sink our teeth into. We'll do that in just a moment. Uh, also coming up very shortly, Michael Smith will join us. We'll flash back in time with Michael. We're going to talk about the purchase of private islands. Nice thing oh. to daydream about. Very few have to actually ever deal with the... Um... Weirdly, though, this island is actually... It sounds silly to say it's affordable, but it's... it's in the range, isn't it? It's in the range for, for a middle-class yeah. family now. Like, it's, it's not much more than a lot of houses in Adelaide are selling for now. <laughs> what does that say about the price of property in Adelaide? Hey, I just want to steal my own thunder for breaking at eight. I'm telegraphing my punches here. How many of our listeners, older listeners, or, or the children of, of older people... How many of you are waiting to get into a federally funded home care package? Okay. This is the scheme that's designed to let you stay in your own home, but to provide you with some care, like an hour or two a day of, of nursing or whatever, to take pressure off the aged care sector. There's some figures that I've got exclusively that we're going to be revealing at 8 o'clock. This should be a national story. Hopefully it will become one. People are waiting. They're dying while they're waiting to get into these home care packages. So eight double two three double O double O. If you're one of those people, you want, you want to listen in after 8 o'clock because I've got some figures and we're going to be talking to Rebecca Sharkey about it. It'll blow your mind. All right, let's head to Canberra now. Michael Packey, the National Political Editor for Nine Radio, joins us. Uh, Michael, good morning to you, mate. Lots to talk about. Let's start with the most recent developments first, uh, starting with the mm. um, Future Made in Australia announcement yesterday. I think it was music of the years. A lot of talkback radio listeners who lament our manufacturing mm. loss, but it feels like the reception's been more mixed in the business community and indeed in politics broadly. Yeah, look, it has been a, a mixed reaction to this, and there's no doubt this was one of these uh, headline announcements that uh, the Prime Minister has been making uh, over the last couple of weeks in the lead-up to the budget in the middle of next uh, month. And, and this, is, I think, is sometimes can be a bit of a problem when you decide that you're going to make these uh, grand announcements, but there's not much detail about how they're going to work. And then when there's not much detail, well, other people are going to start filling that v vacuum to try and say, well, if you do this, this could happen. If you do that, that could happen. And I think that that's what we've seen over the last couple of weeks. We had that solar announcement a couple of weeks ago where uh, it was $1 billion for Australia to manufacture solar panels, even though most of the panel, solar panels that are used in Australia are imported from China. Then we had this announcement that uh, if you're a small business or if you're a household, that you're likely to get further energy rebates in uh, the May budget. But what are those energy rebates uh, going to look like? And then yesterday we had this major speech that was given by the Prime Minister in uh, Brisbane talking about this Future Made in Australia Act. It's essentially legislation which is going to be introduced later in the year and it'll provide financial incentives to investors essentially to develop and produce things in Australia. Uh, and Anthony Albanese believes that we need to do more to be making stuff in Australia to essentially protect ourselves because he's saying that... Uh, during COVID and uh, more recently during the war in Ukraine and that, so, those sorts of conflicts, uh, Australia's supply chains have been strained and uh, we haven't been able uh, to get, get stuff into the country or even when we have been able to get things into the country, whether it be a product or a component to produce a product, it's taken a long time. So it all sounds really good on the surface, but we really don't know how it's going to work. And I think that that's going to be... The question that the, uh, the Prime Minister is probably going to have to start answering over the next couple of weeks, put a bit more meat on the bone uh, to the, on these announcements. The obvious and most divisive issue for the week by the length of the Flemington Strait Pack was Palace Nine with Penny mm. Wong coming out and saying that uh, the government supports a two-state solution, supports the idea of a, of a Palestinian nation. Um, mm. Their argument, obviously, is, well, in the end of the day, it would be safer for... for Israelis as well, because it will it will achieve lasting consensus as to how Israel and, and Palestine can live side by side. But the opposition has, and with a lot of people supporting them, they said, "Well, hang on a minute, is this rewarding Hamas for what they did on October 7? And also, what about the hostages?" Yeah, exactly right. And so, what's happened here is that uh, Penny Wong, the foreign minister, has made this comment in a speech that she delivered during the week, and she's been well and truly backed in by the Prime Minister and other senior Labor members have also backed her in, saying that there needs to be this creation of a Palestinian state that would sit side by side 
uh, along Israel. But, you know, Pembo, Will, we've talked to, how, how often has a two-state solution been talked about and nothing uh, ever really happens? I think the problem here is, is that uh, Penny Wong's made this comment and the opposition does have a point, is why are you making this sort of point, a comment now while this conflict is ongoing, and uh, essentially uh, it would be seen as a reward to Hamas and reward their terrorist activity uh, if uh, this were to happen. What the government is saying is that the international community is starting to get a bit uh, sick and tired of Israel and the fact that it doesn't appear to be moving towards a ceasefire. And so Penny Wong, even in her speech and in press conferences that she's done over the last couple of days has been saying that she's taking her cue from the international community. And uh, she's saying there's, uh, uh, there is conservative members of the international community, such as the UK's Foreign Minister, yeah. David Cameron, who is also pushing uh, for, for the creation of a, of a Palestinian state. But I suppose the, the, the comment that the opposition's making, and Peter Dutton has made it again this morning on television, he's saying the problem here is that by pushing towards this, uh, this sort of a policy or shifting policy, that what you're doing is that at this point in time, you are essentially rewarding Hamas for what they've done mm. uh, on October 7. And, and you're quite right. And you've got these Israeli hostages that still haven't been released. So, you know, it's one of those vexed issues, isn't it? That we're constantly talking about a ceasefire in the Middle East and peace in the Middle East but it doesn't ever seem to happen. There probably does need to be some sort of pathway to making it happen, but using this sort of language now is probably probably not the right thing. Do you think Peter Dutton learnt the hard way that maybe drawing some weird analogy with Port Arthur wasn't a very sensible thing yeah, to do? Yeah, and, and I think that that was silly of him as well. I, I actually couldn't understand what that was all about. Yeah, I, it seems honest. illogical. I, it, completely illogical. Um, he, he drawing this analogy, saying that the, the the protest at the Opera House, the pro-Palestinian protest at the Opera House, this was last year, uh, is akin to what happened in Port Arthur, and I just couldn't quite get my head around what he was talking about. So, I, I agree with you on that. That the sort of language he's used on that on the issue is a bit uh, uh, silly, silly as well. Mm. But you know, I, I just don't know how they really do. Uh, if, from, I suppose from a domestic political point of view, how they really do um, resolve this, because it does seem to be that Labor and the Coalition are very much on opposite sides of the page on this issue. And what is interesting, and what I found interesting, that is on the issue of foreign affairs, you tend to get both sides of politics, or the major parties at least, Labor and the Liberals, they tend to be on the same page, sing from the same song sheet when it comes to a lot of foreign issues, because... You know, we want to be seen to be singing from the same song sheet on the international stage. But on this issue, you've got the government and opposition that definitely are on opposing sides as to the way uh, this issue should be handled. Great analysis, Absolutely. as always. Pa Michael Packey there, the National Political Editor for Nine Radio. This seems pertinent, given it was the big debate topic with Matt Abraham yesterday, but I've just seen the most extraordinary real estate story in the world at the moment. Um, the Wall Street Journal has broken it with regard to a, a sale of an office building in St. Louis in the US. This Yesterday, of course, we're talking about the new development at the, of the Festival Centre, 38 storeys high next to Parliament House. The AT&T Centre is a 44-storey uh, high-rise building uh, that sold in 2006 for $205 million. That was its peak sale price. What do you what, think? What year, what year did it sell? 2006 for $205 million. What do you think it's just gone for? Just sold again. I'm guessing it's gone for less. Yeah, you'd be right. I reckon it might have gone for, let's say, $40 million. $3.6 million. They can't sell office buildings in the United States at the moment. Three point, it's 2% of its peak sale price. A 44-storey building. 44, beautiful building too. Uh, I think it's the highest, it's the tallest Lewis. building. Where's St. that, Lewis. Missouri? Yeah. Tallest building there, I think. Home of the... Beautiful. Calm. But anyway, it just, it, it's just come up from the Wall Street Journal. I thought, in light of our conversation this time yesterday, I don't know, is it relevant? You know there's a World Trade Centre in New Orleans that got damaged really badly in Katrina, and it filled up with this toxic fungus, and the whole thing's boarded up. It's right on the banks of the Mississippi. It's unbelievable. It's like... Wow. It led me down this rabbit hole online, um, doomed buildings. There's all these buildings around the world that are completely un uninhabitable, well, and this is one of them. And they, they reckon they, they tried to sell it years ago for like $1.00. And they couldn't get anyone to buy it. This one's been vacant for five years, this building.
just amazing. Tomorrow, big game on uh, 5AA. We'll be bringing you live the clash between the Crows and Carlton from Melbourne. It's going to be uh, just a pivotal contest for the Adelaide Football Club. I can tell you it's an exciting one for the commentary position here at uh, 5AA because Rowie and I will be joined by the one, one of our favourites, I've got to say, too, when we get to call the, uh, the Crows. Wayne Miller is going to join us on special con uh, comments. Wayne, good morning to you, mate. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, Wayne, great having you on the show. Firstly, mate, can I ask, I went and saw Tom Dude last week when he was recuperating after having the, the surgery. I understand yep. you guys were, were, were almost, um, you know, roommates there at, at Calvary. <laughs> yeah. How are you, yeah. how are you coming along, mate? Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm coming along good. Um, I'm, oh, what am I, I'm with just over a week now post-surgery, but yeah, um, it was uh, Tommy, I, when I first did it, Tommy messaged and um, yeah, we, I ended up saying that we're going in surgery the same day, so yeah. I think he was in before me and um, uh, he made me wait around too a little bit because his surgery went longer than I expected, so I was sitting around <laughs> in the waiting room for about a couple of hours, but um, no, nah, everything went well, it was just good and I end up seeing Tommy after surgery, anyways, and just saying hello quickly uh, yeah. before I head off. Well, he was a big favourite here with our, on our show, uh, a regular with us. It'll be great to have yeah. you uh, doing commentary tomorrow. I, I did to ask you this though: Have you ever heard Stephen Rowe commentate football before? Uh, actually, it's funny. I did have. I had a little snippet when when he when he commentated uh, uh, Rowe's first game, Jimmy Rowe's. Jimmy Rowe. Oh, yeah. I, I was yeah. next to him that day. Yeah. Yeah, it is so, uh, one of the most fun things you'll ever do in your life, Wayne. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, there is no more passionate and excitable caller in football anymore than Stephen Rowe. So tomorrow's going to be a lot of fun. Um, geez, we, we'd much rather be talking to you being out there. But uh, it's going to be great having you in the in the commentary box uh, with us to talk through it all. Uh, how, how do you feel about the prospect of talking to our <laughs> audience about what's going on out there on the ground? I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous as well. But... Um... No, I'm excited for like I'm I'm glad for opportunities. Something something a bit different and um yeah, I just thought it'd be a good opportunity just to do and, and try out. Um but yeah, it's it's exciting but I'm nervous at the same time. <laughs> oh mate, look I gotta say I, I have no real capacity as a broadcaster, so sitting alongside <laughs> <laughs> Sitting alongside Will, Will's good at holding your hand if you if you're not much chop at it. Uh, no. I've been doing it for ten years and pulling it off every morning. You know what the funny thing is with <laughs> you're being silly. You, you know what the funny thing with with footballers Wayne, and I reckon you'll find this tomorrow is there's stuff that you'll think, well, that's so obvious it doesn't need to be said, but because yeah, okay, you do yeah. this, you do this as a job that is playing footy, and the rest of us do yeah. it for fun, it's prob It's not necessarily as obvious to everyone who's listening as you think it might be. So you actually, yeah, I think okay. you'll find it's actually pretty easy in the end because you just point out stuff and yeah. go, well, that's all. He should have done that. That should have happened there. Uh, and and uh, the, everyone sitting at home goes, geez, how good's this? This is great to listen to. <laughs> yeah. So, mate, we're excited. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. Don't be oh. nervous. This is easy. We just... Um, Talk rubbish for a living. It's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Wayne. You'll do, you'll do a great job, mate. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, Wayne Miller on the call tomorrow. Wayne He's Miller. Right. Not Wayne Malera as BT. Well, he always gets it wrong, BT. He, he seems to revel in getting names wrong. <laughs> Club, the club's actually are pretty good these days in, in doing the right thing by their players and, and helping you with pronunciations. Yeah, right. Um, I reckon actually part of it is a byproduct of, of uh, not travelling. A lot of the t when the TV stations don't travel, because you used to get the because of COVID, because of COVID, the, the the media people would come into the commentary box and say, "Any questions?" And you go, "Oh yeah, you got this new guy. What's his deal? Well, how do you say um, Miller, for example?" And they say, "Yeah, no, that's right." But that, that's sort of going by. I reckon that's one of those inter Collar Jasney, Collar Jasney. It's one of those. It's sort of personal interactions that in the absence of it mistakes for one million dollars spell college asney nope <laughs> i will not be a million dollars richer let's check traffic. the other question i've got what's hugh mcluggage's nickname is it samsonite or something like that it would be wouldn't it <laughs> i think they should call him luggage luggage i think they, you're right samsonite would be better yeah and he's a terrific mary samson like mary mary samsonite <laughs> let's check traffic thanks to louvre house 
The lead is in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening bad. and closing roof. Thanks, Will. Roads are looking really good on a Friday, which is nice. A few weeks to keep in mind. You'll find them at South Brighton today, Brighton Road near Folkestone Road, also at Glenelg North, Tapley's Hill Road near Davy Avenue, and always a little bit sluggish on the Southern Expressway to Halloran Hill, just near Majors Road as they're widening the expressway speeds at 80 there. Busy at the moment, Port Rick Expressway at Port Adelaide with a camera Spring Bank Road at Clapham. Switch to AGL Electricity and you can receive a $200 bill credit on electricity plan. Switch to AGL today. Full T's and C's at agl.com.au. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. With help from Flurio Milk Company, cafes all over Adelaide have joined the fight to reduce plastic waste. Instead of single-use plastic bottles, they've introduced reusable 18-litre kegs. Over recent months, a phenomenal amount of single-use plastic bottles have been eliminated and every day the tally grows. Flurio Milk Company, together with cafes, supermarkets, schools, restaurants, hotels and workplaces, expect to save our planet from millions of single-use plastic bottles. Visit fluriomilkco.com.au for more. Thinking about a solar battery? Don't wait. Connect with NRG Solar and bring home a solar battery with a rock-solid 10-year warranty. Use the energy you generate during the day. Store some for later, reducing reliance on energy providers and putting money back in your pocket. See NRG Solar in their new premises at St Mary's. Bigger place, better space, some amazing people. Visit NRG Solar now at 1275 South Road or call 1300 858 160. It all started with a pen and paper 35 years ago. Lots of ideas and a ton of innovation. Nothing's changed. Beechwood Homes is still building stunning bespoke homes right across South Australia. Under construction right now is another Beechwood Homes masterpiece at Blackwood Park. This new display home will showcase Beechwood's dedication to cutting-edge design, craftsmanship and innovation. If you can dream it, Beechwood Homes can build it. Life's good. It's even better in a Beechwood home. Oh, slow down. You in some kind of hurry? Yep, I felt like life was getting away from me. These new shoes are letting me catch up again. I just feel like I've got more energy. Well, they're worth it. Where'd you get them? At Gilmore's. They even measured my feet like when we were kids. I used to love that. Extra energy, hey? Ross loves it. He's heading to Gilmore's this afternoon. Maybe I should join him. How about you take your own husband instead? Oh, ha ha. Gilmore's Comfort Shoes, South Road Melrose Park opposite Castle Plaza. Raywide Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. Five minutes to wait. We're flashing back in time with Michael Smith after 8 o'clock. Big breaking at 8.2. If you're waiting on a home care package from the federal government, you're going to want to listen to this uh, because you are not alone. And if you've been waiting for a long time, you may be surprised about how long some people are being made to wait. That's coming up very shortly. Feedback Friday after 8.30. But let's check in with Jade Robin, who's out on the road thanks to Dutton's this morning, uh, with someone undergoing a fairly unique sort of endurance challenge for charity. Morning, Jade. Good morning, guys. I don't know. Have either of you done anything for 24 hours straight? Nope. Once on a houseboat. Nope. I might have done a 24-hour bend in my 20s, but that's probably <laughs> about it. But my next guest, Grant Friedman, he's the owner of Chaps Barbershop. You're going to cut hair for 24 hours straight. Why? Um, I've got no idea. No, I just thought it would be a, a fun little idea, fun little thing to do. I was speaking to a client one day and he said, uh, I said to him, I really want to do it as a little challenge. And he said, why don't you do it for a charity? So I did it once for a charity a few years back and it was amazing. We raised about nine and a half grand for Autism SA. And then I thought, oh, I'll do it again. So we're raising money this time for the Shaka Project. So who are they? So they're a little charity based in Australia and they raise awareness for uh, mental health and suicide prevention and they go around the country giving talks out to workplaces and schools and just different just different organizations and they teach people pretty much how to have the chat and how to start off and ask if you're okay and I think it's pretty yeah pretty important in this day and age seeing as everyone's suffering and going through it. I love that. And, and a barber shop, I'm guessing, is a bit of a man, man's cave as well, where they sit in the chair and have a bit of a chat. Does that happen here? Yeah, all the time. We get clients coming in and sometimes they'll sit and say nothing. And sometimes you'll get them in here for an hour, just, yeah, pouring their heart out. And all we can do is 
listen and make sure they look good at the end of it, really. Now, it kicks off on Sunday. Uh, how are you preparing for this? Do you, do you get sore hands? Um, sore hands, sore neck, sore knees. You're standing all day and your hands are constantly in the air. Um, how do you prepare? I don't know. I've got a little boy who's constantly up in the middle of the night, so that's given me a little <laughs> bit of practice. But, yeah, that's kind of all I'm getting, really. Have you got a uh, Red Bull sponsor? I mean, really, how do you get through the 24 hours? I can see your fridge here's stock full of uh, Cooper's Pale Ale. That's not a bad heart starter. Yeah, Cooper's Pale Ale, which, yeah, I might have a few. There'll be some dodgy haircuts, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of my clients are probably going to be bringing in coffees. Hint, hint. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, last time I did it, I had way too much coffee and uh, yeah, almost screwed myself over. So hopefully just loads of water and hydrolytes. I'm seeing vibes of Edward Scissorhands here. How many people have you got booked? Because you just mentioned you've got to bring in another chair. Um, yeah, so I've got 48 clients booked in. Um, and yeah, so I'm literally going every half an hour, there's a client booked in for the 24 hours. So yeah, there's not going to be a lunch break or a dinner break or a nap break. How much are you trying to raise? Well, we've got a little GoFundMe page. Um, I set the goal at 2,000 uh, to start with. We hit last night just, uh, I think it was just over 1,600. And from what I've calculated, we were due to take in about two and a half grand on the actual day. So yeah, I don't know, it looks like we're gonna, looks like we're gonna achieve the goal and hopefully some more. Good on you, mate. And hey, what's the most popular haircut? Please tell me the mullets on the way out. <laughs> Unfortunately not. I think the mullets, yeah, it's pretty It's pretty in at the moment. A lot of people are having it. Mullets, mohawks, everyone's doing pretty crazy stuff. And But sometimes you get the easy buzz cut. Hopefully every single client's going to have a buzz cut. We're just going to have a number one all over. <laughs> See, I've got one son that's got the buzz cut and the other's got the uh, the, the mullet. And I actually love the the second one a little bit less because he is sporting a mullet. <laughs> cool. yeah, I, I don't blame you. Just get him in his sleep. Get a, get a pair of clippers, chuck them on and, well... Well, you can't really do anything about it, can you? I might bring him down here, in fact, Grant. Thank you so very much, and good on you for doing this. It's excellent. Head on down to Chops Barber on Sunday. You can find them at 53 Phillip Street in Westlakes. Great idea, and uh, terrific. They're doing, well, he's doing it for an excellent cause, too. Absolutely. Good on you, Grant, and uh, more power to your scissors. The news and information that matters. This is 5AA News, always Adelaide. 21 and partly cloudy today with the 8 o'clock news, I'm Jess Adamson. Injured or living with chronic pain? Book an appointment at Physio Extra today. Six locations, physioextra.com. American footballer, broadcaster, actor and murder suspect O.J. Simpson has died. Born Arenthal James Simpson, the 76-year-old was fighting prostate cancer. 30 years ago, he was acquitted of killing ex-wife Nicole Brown and her friend Rod Goldman. Millions watched a televised low-speed chase immediately after the incident as police followed him across L.A. Oh, patrol. Yeah, um, I think I just saw O.J. Simpson on the uh, 5 freeway and there was an all he's heading north and I got the license plate of the white Bronco 3D8. Y503, and, and we like look at him, you know, uh -huh. and he like stared us down like he was dead. <laughs> New police data has revealed more drivers have been caught speeding in the Adelaide Hills than anywhere else. The worst location was the fixed camera at Crafers on the southeastern freeway, which nabbed more than 7,000 motorists and cost drivers almost $4 million. The top four regional fixed cameras were all located on the southeastern freeway. With school holidays kicking off later today, the RAA is pleading with drivers to stick to the speed limit. A car went up in flames at Northgate last night. Fire crews were called to Paddington Avenue after reports the flames had started to spread to a nearby house. They quickly extinguished the blaze. No one was injured. Police are investigating. A campaign has been launched to save the bus from the iconic movie The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. The state government's chipped in $100,000 to help restore the bus to its former glory and bring it back to SA. The whole project could cost more than a million dollars. State MP Blair Boyer says the 1976 Hino freighter was previously thought lost. Seeing the photos of where it was found makes you shake your head. It was literally in a paddock sitting out in the elements in New South Wales and there are photos where it narrowly missed a bushfire as well that would have certainly ended everything for the bus. But we finally found it. We confirmed it's the bus because we managed to see the pink paint flakes on one side. 
The plan is to house it at the National Motor Museum in Birdwood, once restored. Experts are calling on the federal government to include retirement communities as a key delivery component of the National Housing Accord. A new survey from the Property Council of Australia reveals that the retirement living industry is outperforming other subsectors and is forecast to be greater than residential, office, retail and hotels combined. Retirement Living Council Executive Director Daniel Gannon says the building of retirement communities would have a positive impact on the housing crisis. You know, the, the supply cramp and the affordability stress that so many people are seeing right now, the retirement living sector can help out because we actually help with the right-sizing transition to free up more housing stock in the middle of the market. More than two-thirds of Australians are looking to travel this month, but not overseas. Despite cost of living pressures, a Tourism and Transport Forum survey found one in four respondents ranked travel as a top priority for non-essential spending. Melbourne has been deemed the most popular city for holidaymakers, followed by Gold Coast. From today, the beloved Polly Waffle is back on our shelves, but it looks a little different. The chocolate bar has been turned into a bag of Polly Waffle Bites. Phil Sims from Men says there have been a few hurdles after they bought the rights to produce it in 2019. When we purchased the brand, we never purchased any uh, production equipment. That was no longer available. So we had to start from scratch. Also, retailer expectations changed a little bit, so we had to sort of work around recipe and, and, and advance or extend the shelf life of the product. Now turning to 5AA Sport. Colours, custom design, any house, any style. Gliderol Garage Doors. Gliderol.com.au Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Jess. Brisbane defender Noah Answorth could be in hot water after appearing to mock Melbourne's Harry Petty in last night's 22-point win. Petty was left in tears in late 2022 after a sledge by then Lions captain Dane Zorko against the tall believed to be about Petty's mother. The Lions won last night's match by 22 points. The Crows have brought back Will Hamill and Lockie Gallant for tomorrow's twilight clash against Carlton at Marble Stadium, while Paddy Parnell is injured and Chris Burgess has been dropped. Meantime, Port welcomes back Sam Powell Pepper and Ollie Wines for the team to tackle Frio, while Travis Boak and Jeremy Finlayson both come out. Let's go to golf. Australians Cameron Smith and Cameron Davis have both struck trouble on the back nine of their opening rounds at the US Masters. Bryson DeChambeau is saying he's off to a good start after firing three birdies in a row. It's always great getting off to a hot start. Three under, your first three holes kind of get you settled. Um, I knew it was going to be a tough day today with the wind and even tomorrow. So a lot of patience is required around this golf course and um, making sure you're just stroking it on your line, putting it good, hitting good iron shots and driving it well. Yeah, Deshambo finishing at 7 under, while world number 1 Scotty Scheffler is just one shot back, just completing his round at 6 under. To tennis, and Alex Demonor has won an all-Aussie affair, taking care of Alexi Popran in straight sets to advance to the quarterfinals of the Monte Carlo Masters. In some soccer, Adelaide United must continue its winning streak if it's to keep its A-League finals hopes alive when the Reds face MacArthur FC at home tonight. Meantime, in overseas action, Liverpool has gone down 3-0 to Atalanta. That was in the first leg of their Europa League quarter-final tie, while West Ham also lost 2-0 against Bayer Leverkusen. And Formula One driver Fernando Alonso has signed a new deal to stay with Aston Martin for the next two seasons. And that's the 5AA Sport. Thanks, Tom. Now checking 5AA Traffic. Lynn Andrews Real Estate, experts in commercial and residential property management. lynnandrews.com.au Accident breakdown through the majors. That's a really nice way to wrap up the week, isn't it? A few works to keep in mind today. You'll find them on a Halloran Hill on the Southern Express on Majors Road as they widen the expressway there. Speeds at 80. Always a little sluggish in the morning. Bit of activity at Cowan Dillon, Marion Road near Sir Donald Brabham Drive and starting to slow up Main North Road at Enfield on the drive into the city. Cameras, Anzac Highway, Ashford and Salisbury Highway at Salisbury. Drop it to YGA today for great savings on Australian beef blade roast. Only $12 per kilo. Offer ends April 16. Excludes IGA local gross at Express while stocks last. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Now the 5AA forecast. See any issue firsthand with AutoCam. Real-time video, direct to you from your Automasters technician. Partly cloudy and 21 today. The same again tomorrow, 22 and partly cloudy for Sunday and Monday. Right now it's 14 degrees. More news as it happens on 5AA. When you're a market-leading builder, like Regent Homes, you never rest on your laurels. 
It's why Regent Homes is South Australia's only builder offering 3D virtual reality technology in their Envision Design Studio. At your first design meeting, you'll walk through your home in virtual reality. It's a wow moment, enriching your experience so you can make the right design choices from the start. Regent Homes, innovative design, elevated living. Visit regenthomes.com.au Oh, electricity bill! Bills shouldn't oh, be scary. No, no. EcoVantage have supplied energy efficiency in homes for over 15 years. They can install hot water systems that use up to 80% less electricity than regular hot water systems. Help the environment while you save hundreds. And thanks to federal and SA government incentives, you could get your energy efficient hot water system supplied and installed for as little as no cost to you. Stop scary hot water bills with ecovantage.com.au Hey, you in the car. If your next service is due, just remember that Mawson Lakes Mazda has your back. We'll take care of you with next day servicing, complimentary loan car, vacuum and wash, and your breakfast or lunch is on us. Your car gets the love too, with our state-of-the-art service centre brimming with top train mechanics. At Mawson Lakes Mazda, we'll look after your car and look after you. Mawson Lakes Mazda, just a short drive from the city. Via the 5AA Player app on DAB Digital Radio and on 1395 AM. This is 5AA, always Adelaide. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. There's nothing left. Gone Nine minutes after eight. Good morning to you joining us for the first time on this Friday morning, the 12th of April. Jeez, we've had a lot of fun with our Meat Tray Friday this morning. Thanks to Hayden's Family Butcher Shop 52 in Burnside Village. If you've got a topic that instantly starts an argument, game that instantly starts an argument, a uh, debate that starts an argument, any nomination uh, that's an argument starter, and you might win yourself that meat tray this morning. Still time for more of your calls on 8223 Great butcher shop, Hayden. Certainly is. Feedback Friday's not too far away either. We're going to flash back in time with Michael Smith in a moment as well. And if you've ever found yourself daydreaming about buying a private island, well, stay listening because in just a moment, you might well be in the market. <laughs> Well, when Labor was elected federally, one of their promises was that they were going to put the care back into aged care. Well, figures that we have obtained give lie to that promise. The number of people waiting to get into home care packages has almost doubled in the last nine months. 28,000 people were waiting in June. It's now up to 51,000. And some of them are waiting for as long as nine to 12 months to get into this vital home care package care system. Rebecca Sharkey has obtained these numbers and provided them to me. And we have Rebecca Sharkey, who is, of course, the federal member for Mayo on the line now. Rebecca, good on you for pursuing this issue. Um, but as we always do here on 5 Double, I want to start with the sort of human dimension, because this has all come about. Like Your, your interest and awareness of it has been piqued by the fact that you've had a, a, a number of calls from older people in your hills and, and Fleurio seat of Mayo just tearing their hair out, saying they can't, they can't get this care. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good morning, David and Will. Um, look, probably in the last three to six months, we've been getting more people contacting us. It's either by email, it's often the, the children of the people that are looking for a package, or uh, the people themselves who have been waiting, uh, waiting to be assessed, and then waiting for their package um, for you know, extraordinary length of time. And I thought, well, what is going on here? We, we, we got this under what I felt was under control and we were seeing, you know, less uh, cases come into the office, for, uh, less people for us to support. Um, and we had in 2021, 2022 20, uh, budget, uh, and then in 23 budget, some significant funding going into this to, to get effectively, you know, the weight this gone. And so we, we dug up the figures and now I understand why my constituents who have broken hips, who are wheelchair bound, who are being told that they're medium priority, who are, you know, waiting since August last year and longer for a package and still waiting because we've blown out from one to three month waiting time in February last year to in March this year, 
if you are looking for a level three package, if you've been assessed for a level three package, up to 12 months. And the figure you quoted of 51,000 people waiting, um, that's as of December last year. I think it's probably increased by at least 10,000 more since then, seeing mm. it looks like every quarter it's, it's going up by 10,000 or more. Uh, and then that's not even factoring in the people who um, who are just waiting to be assessed. I have one constituent. Um, he was approved in August last year um, when the waiting times were, you know, supposedly lower. Um, his health has deteriorated significantly. He was assessed as medium priority. Um, he's been to, he's asked for a reassessment. He's told that that reassessment while he's waiting can't even occur until June this year. So, so this. And to be clear uh, too, Rebecca, a lot of these people, when they're doing it, they might only, you know, have another year or two to live. Well, that that's the the great tragedy in this is that I think a lot of people have died waiting for a package. Um, well, I've you've been talking together, to someone who is sadly yeah. in that situation where they're just not answering their phone anymore, and you're going into bat for them, trying to get them get them a spot. Yeah, absolutely. And and we're hearing from, um, you know, the adult children saying, you know, I, I can't help mum. What can we do? We're waiting. How can mum be a medium priority when she can't shower herself? She's struggling to eat herself. She desperately wants to stay in her home. Um, and yet, you know, we're talking 12 months. I mean, that's the, that's the thing that we need to realise. A level four package is for, you know, the highest level of care that, that the government funds in the home. So level, um, level, just to be clear, level one is sort of the lower level of need. Level four is the highest level of need. And level that's correct. Level, so level four, which is people like the lady you just described, the wait time as of 31st of March, uh, six to nine months. Absolutely. And, and we know when someone's in that situation, and often it's post um, it's post a hospital stay um, or, you know, something's happened physically. Um, in many cases, I'm, I'm talking with many constituents who are caring for their uh, husband or wife with very significant dementia, who they themselves are becoming very ill because they can't get that support for the person that they desperately love to be able to, to be in the home with them. Mm. Um, I, I, I think... A lot of people have thought, well, surely this is fixed. You know, the, the Royal Commission into Aged Care was three years ago. The government did promise that we were going to have a new Aged Care Act implemented by July this year. And now that looks like it's pushed out into the never-never. So well, we're going to keep We're going to keep pursuing it. Yeah, and we share your frustration, Rebecca. And as I said, good on you for pursuing this. We're also going to be talking next week to some of the older people who are just currently sitting there waiting for the phone to ring to advise them that they have actually got into one of these home care packages. Rebecca Sharkey there, Federal Member for Mayo, for breaking it out. Terrible. Yeah, that's scandal. Shocking. Absolute scandal. 16 minutes after eight. Hamish Henry is a former music promoter and band manager from Adelaide who now lives in Queensland and owns a private island, Temple Island, in the Great Barrier Reef that he just wants to get rid of, so much so that he's selling it in a price range that I don't think would make too many people be shocked if it was a house in the eastern suburbs of Adelaide, certainly in Melbourne or Sydney. Henry, uh, Richard Van Hoff is the founder of Private Islands Online, whose website I've just been perusing. And I'll tell you what, if you ever want to daydream about owning luxury, go to this website. It is just <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, Richard, good morning to you. Good morning, boys. Now, Richard, we love this story. I was reading it yesterday in The Australian, so... What a life Hamish Henry had. He was behind, I'm not sure if you're a South Australian yourself, but our listeners of a certain generation will remember this. So Hamish was behind the Maiponga Rock Festival, and he also managed a number of bands, including the Bon Scott-led rock group Fraternity. What about that for a pedigree? Oh, it's sensational, because he's such an unassuming guy, yet uh, I guess he was the pioneer of... Uh Modern uh, outdoor music. Yeah. Yeah, top bloke. Great. Excellent. It's a great story. So tell us about this island. So he's just at the point in his life where he thinks, I just don't need it anymore. I had a, I had a look at it online. It looks stunning. It is a good-looking island. Um, yeah, look, uh, I, I think he's just come to the end of uh, his uh, basic 
uh, exploring of uh, of of the the Australia's best spots in you know that one could visit. Mm. And he's had this for about seven years. He's just um, got to the end of it, and he's thinking, uh, "What else can I do? Maybe retirement might be a good one." <laughs> <laughs> so, so he only wants what he wants less than two million for it, Richard. Yeah, look, we, we'd had it up for uh, sale for one point seven five. Had a great deal of response to it. Um, and uh, now he wants to speed things up, and he's asked us to put it to auction, which will go to the rooms on the 16th of May at about 11.30 in uh, in Brisbane. So how? And, what's the closest town to it, and how far off the mainland is it? It's about a, a K off the mainland, uh, and it's south of Mackay in Queensland, which is up in the just past central, heading towards the north of Queensland. Small fry for you, Richard. I note on your website you're selling. There, there are islands here for, well, one of them in top of Thailand's 160 million US dollars at the moment. <laughs> uh, what happens? Someone shoot you an email and say, "I've got my eye on that one," or you know, one off Central America for 100 million. How does how does real estate work when you're talking sums like that? Well, I'm hopeless at land products. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking no, at it on the I'm map. Not. It looks amazing. Yeah, look, it's, it, the areas are beautiful. I've got well, Hamilton Island is where I spent eighteen years. We um, we I'll talk about music. I was next door neighbour to George Harrison for a while, and uh, then he uh, uh, we put a, a pair of binoculars up the top of the hill where you put a, a dollar into peruse the with Sundays, and uh, he thought I was uh, I'd done it to, uh, to so the guests could perv on his backyard, and uh, <laughs> he got upset with me and took took it off. Oh, 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 they just told me hid it from me. So anyway, um, yeah, Hamilton Island was where I got the idea of, uh, you know, hanging around islands, and uh, we our family grew up there, and it was it's been great, and uh, so the pedigree has uh, continued. Unbelievable. And yeah, well, well it's going to be a. I, I just can't believe the price one point seven five million. Who knows what happens at the auction? Mm. But um, when you're talking to. Um, Hamish, tell him uh, his old mates in South Australia say good day because I reckon we'll have more than a couple of listeners who were right there at the My Ponga Rock Festival. Good on you, oh, um, Richard. Sure. Thank you, mate. Richard Van Hoff there. Private Islands Online. Mm. I haven't actually checked out the whole website. Have you looked at? You've looked at. Clearly, you have. You mentioned the place in Thailand. Yeah, <laughs> 160. There's one I like too. That's off of Belize. That's about 100 million US dollars. Still need yeah. to save up a little bit. Don't know if I wanted to go and do the shopping in. Bellama Pam, the capital of Belize. No, that's true. Really good place to get, you know. I'm glad you got to the shopping element. Kidnapped. I, I was still trying to get past having to pay stamp duty. <laughs> I suppose if you were in a position... <laughs> correct. If you're in a position to afford it, you could probably get someone to do I your shopping. Yeah, I don't think you're knocking into town with your plastic bags. Well, you could go, always go to Cancun. It's not far. <laughs> I, don't think you, I don't think you have a limit on the, your possibilities <laughs> if you're buying $100 million islands. <laughs> 21 after 8, nice to dream. Uh, we're going to flash back in time with Michael Smith in just a moment. Let's check traffic first. Thanks to Louver House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. Thanks, Will. Touch wood. The roads are looking really good this morning. Accident and breakdown free on the majors. Really good running of the city, which is nice. Do have works at Glenside to look out for. Fullerton Road near Greenhill Road. Bit sluggish though, Halloran Hill. That's on the Southern Express when you majors road as they widen the expressway. Speeds at 80 k's there. And we've got cameras this morning. Angle Var Road, Virginia. And Eliza Place of Panorama. Freedom's mid season sale ends Monday. Get up to 30% off selected leather and fabric sofas. Plus, for a limited time, get 50 months interest free. Conditions apply only at Freedom. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. The 5AA Sports Show. Stephen Rowe and Tim Jennifer. Crows Carlton, it's Saturday, it's Twilight, Marvel Stadium. Some exciting news. Off the bench, we have. Wayne Miller Jr. Wow. Sitting with me. He's just had his knee done with his leg up and yeah. ice on it with special comments. The 5AA Sports Show. Good and, and, well and, done. and he's one of the best chiselers inside 50. Yeah. I'm going to grill the living gizzards out of him. Weekdays from 4 p.m. on 5AA. Always Adelaide. Emergencies are no time to be making tough choices. Luckily, when it comes to the best emergency care, your choice is clear. Calvary Adelaide is South Australia's newest state-of-the-art hospital. With Adelaide's only 24-hour private emergency department, Calvary provides emergency care at any time with no time spared. 
You'll experience shorter wait times, personalised attention from experienced specialists and nurses, and comfortable modern facilities. Trust Calvary Adelaide, 120 Angus Street, Adelaide. Beechwood Homes, Adelaide's leading bespoke home builder, celebrates 35 years. Over that time, they've helped many hundreds of people realise their dream of building a home exactly how they envisioned it. That's the wonderful thing about building with Beechwood. There are no set plans, no set rules. It all starts with a pen, paper and your ideas. Just like it did 35 years ago. If you can dream it, Beechwood Homes can build it. Life's good. It's even better in a Beechwood home. Jarvis Toyota has moved to their brand new home in Brighton Road, Somerton Park. Take advantage of opening savings across the Toyota certified pre-owned range and enjoy the same feeling you get with a new Toyota at Jarvis Toyota. All certified pre-owned vehicles are tested and backed by Toyota, including a full service history and 90 point safety check. Toyota certified, pre-owned in a class of its own. Jarvis Toyota, now at Brighton Road, Somerton Park, proudly celebrating 22 years of great deals. La -da 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 -da. <laughs> Morning, Debbie. <laughs> oh, check the crack, not you again. Sorry, job to do. <laughs> Don't wreck the house, I'm about to get a revalue. I could knock a hundred grand off the price dead easy. But don't! I did warn you with that crack in the corners over there. Sorry. Don't let cracks ruin your home. Adelaide Screw Piling will underpin your foundation, saving you thousands. Fully licensed, servicing all suburbs. Go to adelaidescrewpiling.com.au Rosanna Mangiarelli here from 7 News. Join me and Will Goodings for Adelaide's leading news hour, 7 News, tonight at 6 o'clock. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. Well, 24 after 8, Michael Smith in just a moment. Huge reaction to Breaking at 8, though, this morning. Listeners on home care packages or aware of stories and people that have been waiting an extraordinarily long time. Irene uh, from Claire has called us on this issue. Morning to you, Irene. Good morning. How are you both going? Good, thank you, Irene. Now I understand you've been waiting for months to get into one of yeah, these packages. Since, since April last year. April? So 12 yes, months? I went I went for my care plan. Uh, the nurse practitioner rang um, the aged care mob. Uh, they rung me back. They missed me on the phone. I rang back, and I rang back for three days, and I'm still waiting to hear from them. That's ridiculous. Well, I know. It's good that you've spoken out, Irene, and re that Rebecca Sharkey has crunched these numbers too because we're going to pursue it. Thank you. We have Tony and Seaton on the line as well about the same issue. G'day, Tony. Hey, boys. Uh, hi, Dave Will. Uh, look, my, my thing is um, the wait period is definitely one thing, but don't, I mean, even call it like Irene and the ones before. That's not when it's all over. Once you get it, I mean, I, I got one from my mum. It was over $50,000 at level four. It's an absolute rort because the providers are not capped at all. So from the $52,000 that um, we received, you know how much uh, care she, that equals to? 9.5 hours a week. Absolute scam. Because all the providers are not capped. The government doesn't cap them. So then I had to go to self-manage where you hire your own people, you control your budget, mm. you pay a provider a small fee. I ended up getting 20 to 25 hours by doing it myself. Really? So it's, it's not over. It's actually not wow. over even after you get... Over 50,000. Nine hours. That story. That's an Nine amazing story, hours. mate. I'll tell you what. 9.5 hours for a fully blind person. How, do you, how does that work? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's, that's, crazy that's, that's, that's close to useless. Wow. Well, yeah. the figures are pretty dodgy, aren't they? It sounds almost NDIS-like. Oh, yeah. Clearly it is. <laughs> that's sus. There's probably... There's a, there's a bigger story to tell about this, I think. Um, but good on you, Tony and Irene. Thank you. It's time to flashback with Michael Smith. Jumping in the time machine with Michael Smith and his excellent flashback segment on Sunday nights, Channel 7 from 6 o'clock. Michael, good morning to you. Good morning, Chupa Chups. I was very invested in your Chupa Chup <laughs> chat this morning, David. Did you know that, Michael? Or should I call you Miguel? Well, I didn't know that, and I was intrigued to learn about Salvador Dali's connection to designing the thing as well. Yeah, no idea. He took time out from his hectic clock-bending schedule to knock out a lollipop label. <laughs> Well, it's a nice coincidence because this week's flashback is art-related as well, although it's probably got more twists and turns than the Velo 500 circuit. In fact, 
It could have been written by Agatha Christie. You guys know Carrick Hill down at Springfield. Mm -hmm. The fine home left to the people of South Australia by the Haywood family, known for its furniture and art collection. Well, back in 1986, it was the scene of a major crime. What at the time was Australia's biggest ever art heist. Some crims broke in in the middle of the night and took off with four paintings that at the time were said to be worth $2 million, three by Paul Gauguin and one by Eugene Baudin. Have a listen to this report at the time by David Richardson. Thieves smashed a side window to enter the piano room which contains a number of expensive works. An electronic movement alarm system was triggered, but within four minutes the thieves had escaped with four paintings. All very shocked. I think uh, not only does one feel a personal loss, but you feel it in the sense of um, everybody who's involved, not only the institution itself, but uh, the public at large. Police believe the four paintings were too expensive to be fenced on local markets, and they've already headed interstate or possibly overseas. Interpol was alerted. People at airports around Australia were told about the paintings. But that's where the curious thing began. They turned up six days later. No one was ever charged. And then questions were raised about the authenticity of these paintings. And it turned out that two of the four paintings were actually fakes. So we don't know who painted them, who stole them, how they were returned. Although having said that, former Liberal MP Heine Becker and the director of Caracal at the time, David Thomas, were involved in their recovery. But it's all really mysterious that 40 years on, we don't know who was behind the heist or who ever came up with these very good knockoffs of the Gauguin painting. What a mystery. So, that, so that it was established in the end that they were fake, though, Mike? Yes. Two of the paintings were sent to the UK for authentication and they were found out to be fakes. They were subsequently returned. I think they're even on display now with little uh, stickers by them saying the authenticity of this question has this painting has been questioned. Um, certainly not worth the $2 million that they were insured for. <laughs> two of the paintings were rigid ditch, two were knockoffs. Um, who crept into Caracal in the middle of the night and ripped them off the walls is, is not known. That invites a whole heap of speculation. Wow, what a story. Who knew what? Wow, yeah, what a great story. And as you say, it is like an Agatha Christie tale. I love it. Fantastic, Michael. Michael Smith there uh, with seven years of flashback. At Coles, there's great value hands down across fruit and veg this week. Like delicious, 100% Aussie, loose, white seedless grapes. Just $4.50 a kilo. Get great value hands down at Coles. Offer ends Tuesday. Get the outdoor living that you want at Garden Grove. Entertaining in the garden? Come and explore the range of new and beautiful outdoor furniture, water features, garden pots and giftware. It's everything you want. Garden Grove, Golden Grove Road, Golden Grove. Garden Grove, that's the garden. Garden Grove, that's the garden. Garden Grove, the garden that I want. Phone 8251 1111 for delivery to all areas. Open seven days. This is 5AA News, always Adelaide. 21 and partly cloudy today with the 8.30 News, I'm Jess Adamson. Everybody is unique. Let the Physio Extra team take care of your specific needs. PhysioExtra.com One of America's most infamous and divisive stars, O.J. Simpson, has died of prostate cancer at the age of 76. U.S. correspondent Alison Petrowski. In June of 1994, 93 million Americans stopped and watched one of their most decorated athletes in a slow-speed car chase through Los Angeles. you got to tell the police to just back off. He's still alive and he got a gun to his head. Orenthal James Simpson was accused of the murders of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman. The televised case was dubbed the trial of the century. A critical piece of evidence, a pair of bloodied gloves found at the crime scene. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. The gloves were too small and Simpson walked away a free man. But in 1997 he was found liable for their murders in a civil suit and was later convicted of robbery and kidnapping after stealing sports memorabilia from a Las Vegas hotel. He served the minimum nine years in a Nevada state prison before walking free in 2017. Simpson succumbed to his cancer battle surrounded by his children and grandchildren. 
Another collar for police dog chaos. She rounded up a teenager wanted for a home invasion at Salisbury early this morning. A 59-year-old man woke to find someone in his bedroom in Lode Street around 1am. He yelled out and the intruder ran off, stealing his mobile phone. Senior Constable Rebecca Stokes says police tracked the phone to Salisbury North before chaos found the suspect hiding in a backyard. There's a 16-year-old Port Perry South boy who's been arrested and charged with aggravated serious criminal trespass theft, carry offensive weapon, unlawful possession and two counts of breach of bail and he'll appear in the Elizabeth Youth Court today. The famous bus from the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, could soon find a permanent home in SA. After being found weathering in a paddock in rural New South Wales, a campaign's been launched to restore it to its former glory and house it at the National Motor Museum in Birdwood. State MP Blair Boyer says the government's chipping in $100,000, but the project will cost much more than that. All up in terms of bringing it back, I think it's currently in Queensland and restoring it and building the immersive kind of experience it'll be well over a million but it will certainly provide us with another important reason for people to visit the National Motor Museum as well. I think it will boost numbers not just from South Australia but interstate and potentially overseas to see this. The federal government is facing increasing pressure to change the student loan system. Hex debts were indexed by 7.1% in June last year, meaning many are paying more than their mandated repayments due to interest. Independent Dr Monique Ryan has started a petition to lower the indexation rate, which has amassed 250,000 signatures. She says young people are falling behind. What's happened now over time is that the way that indexation has affected young people and the issues that many people are experiencing in paying back their debt means that they're, they're making payments but they're seeing their debt increase over time. New data reveals more employees are choosing to stay with their current employer after receiving a counteroffer, even when they're on the cusp of resigning. Recruitment expert Clinton Mark says sometimes it's better the devil you know. Yeah, definitely. I think obviously when people are in that position right now when they're thinking about Putting food on the table and the cost of living crisis, they're, they're certainly thinking, I don't need to make a rash decision. Now turning to 5AA Sport. Gliderol Garage Doors. Adding strength, style and safety to your home. Gliderol.com.au Here's Tom Wren. Thank you, Jess. Let's start with footy. Brisbane's slow start to the season has been kick-started with a 22-point win against Melbourne in the first game for round five. Player of the match, Cam Rayner, telling Fox Footy he's had some early success in the Lions midfield. Still got a little bit more as the game went on, but um, you know that midfield group that we've got, it's a very strong unit and to be able to compliment the players was a bonus. Audio there thanks to Fox. The Lions are now up to ninth on the ladder, while tonight it's the Bulldogs up against Essendon at Marvel Stadium. You can hear all the action here on 5AA. Let's get to golf. Players are battling the ele elements during a weather-affected opening round of the Masters at Augusta. The first round start was delayed by two and a half hours with strong winds now playing havoc. Didn't bother American Bryson DeChambeau, who has the clubhouse lead at 7-under, while world number one Scotty Scheffler is only a shot further back at 6-under. Cam Davis is the best of the Aussies, currently 3-under with only one hole to play, while Tiger Woods is currently 1-under through 10 holes. His playing partner and Aussie Jason Day started badly, but he just made a 27-foot putt for birdie on the 10th to move back to even par. He gave it a good wrap. And he finds the cut. That's more like it, Jason. A little more comfortable there. Yeah, it was a good part, that audio, again, thanks to Fox. And in some tennis, Alex Demonor has become the first Australian in 25 years to reach the quarterfinals of the Monte Carlo Masters. He's defeated fellow Aussie Alexi Poprin 6-3, 6-4, and will now face Novak Djokovic in the quarterfinals. And that's the 5AA Sport. Thanks, Tom. Now checking 5AA traffic. Lynn Andrews Real Estate. Experts in commercial and residential property management. LynnAndrews.com.au Roads are working well today. Accident or breakdown free. Simply some works to look at for you find them at Eastwood this morning. Glad Osman Road near Fullerton Road, but no great delays there. Also works at Port Adelaide, Bower Road near Causeway Road and Road Plates in use of Dry Creek this morning. Churchill Road North near Cormac Road speeds at 40. Cameras, Barramundi Drive, Hallett Cove and Salisbury Highway to Salisbury. Step into the new BYD Seal and journey into the future, an all-electric vehicle delivering up to 650 k's of adventure. Test drive the new BYD Seal today. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Now the 5AA forecast. See any issue firsthand with AutoCam. Real-time video, direct to you from your AutoMasters technician.
21 and partly cloudy today, a carbon copy tomorrow, 22 and partly cloudy for Sunday and Monday. Right now it's 14 degrees. More news as it happens on 5AA. It's time for Feedback Friday. $100 worth of free fish could be coming your way. All you need to do is call in right now on 8223 0000. First three callers through will participate in Feedback Friday. It's very easy. It's very fun. Five questions, no wrong answers. Get calling now. Have the weekend sorted. If you're entertaining, whatever you're doing, go in and get to see that wonderful You're shop entertaining. That is Sam. Thank you, David. Or are you saying I am? Yes, you are. Do you mean as an adjective or a verb? Uh... I, uh, well, both. Okay. Yeah, you're well, currently entertaining, okay. and you, you are Thank you. entertaining as a state of being. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Feedback Friday is always entertaining. It's next. Australia's leading manufacturer of wheels to the mining, civil and transport industries is Rimex. And now Rimex has a local certified workshop right here in Adelaide. Wheel repairs, testing and certification, custom wheel builds and a full range of spares and accessories. Rimex. Tire supplier to the transport and civil industries, plus the Boto range of OTR tires. Rimex. Better wheels, built strong with proven performance. Rimex. Call 707 8527 or visit rimex.com.au. Ham made from Australian pork has to meet Australia's strict quality controls and standards. And while that means us farmers have to jump through hoops, I reckon the taste's worth it. So for true Australian quality ham, just pick a pack with a pink pork logo. Sold by McGain again. And because there's still limited homes available, it is really important to get along to these open inspections. Tomorrow from 12 to 12.45pm, 12 Josh Morrison and Steve Krause are opening 21 Marine Parade Merino. This architecturally transformed five-bedroom, three-bathroom home on the beachfront offers uninterrupted panoramic ocean views with multiple living spaces, wine cellar and balcony with built-in barbecue. You'll enjoy a luxury lifestyle, especially with a dual zone swim spa, fire pit and outdoor shower. This sounds like it should be one of those oh, lifestyles of the rich and famous. You don't need to ads. tell me, mate. I've, I have seen a video of it. Mike Dobbin, the, 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 the head honcho at McGain, great bloke, he sent me a link to the video and I watched it at home yesterday. It is unbelievable. It's it looks like, like it should be on Sydney Harbour. Oh, I was going to say, I feel like I'm reading out one of those sort of, uh, that old TV show that talked about boats, you know. Pleasure craft for the rich and famous. The bloke uh, who owns it apparently is like super handy. I, I, oh my must goodness. be a tradie. So he's done a lot of it himself, but he's just absolutely stunning house. And there's an undercover entertaining area and a three-car garage with room for caravan and boat. Anyway, speak to Joshua Stephen. And uh, suss the price. And then also tomorrow from 12.15 to 12.45, Zoe and Mike are opening 52 Spriggs Road on Kaparinga Hills. It's a beautifully presented four-bedroom family home. Two large living areas, updated kitchen with a big walk-in pantry, huge pitched undercover entertaining area, a large shed, double lock-up carport and parking for a boat or caravan, just 785 to 825k. Take a look at these properties and all the McGain listings at mcgain.com.au. 5AA Breakfast is streaming live right now. To watch, simply head to 5AA on Facebook or YouTube. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. 20 to 9, rounding out the week in our traditional manner with Feedback Friday. Questions arising from things that have happened over the course of the last five or six days, uh, there aren't wrong answers, it's not a quiz, just to get your thoughts or experiences on, uh, on certain things, and you could win yourself $100 worth of free fish, thanks to Samtas Seafood, where $100 Samtas. goes a long, long way. They got that four kilos for $60 deal, so... They had a birthday this week, Mark Adonis. Happy birthday, Mark. He is the uh, the head guy. Fantastic. Sam Tess. Happy birthday. Doing God's work there, selling South Australia's finest seafood seven days a week. One spot still available. You can get calling at 8223 I was about to try and do the math live on the air, which is always fraught, uh, about how many kilos you'd then get for $100, given you do four well, for that's 60. that's a hard sum. You know, there was a, a lovely bloke who came up after the we did the outside broadcast at the um, uh, Central Market the other day, who came and said, listens every day, Loves the show. He is a math high school maths teacher. And I said, surely that is like nails on the chalkboard listening mm. to David and I stuff up simple math every single day. And he said, no, he finds it all quite entertaining. <laughs> anyway, we He's not my former math teacher. I've never been more kicked out of a subject than that one. He's glad to see the back of me, I think. I was a total halfwit. <laughs> Got 33% for year 10 maths. 
which I believe yeah. is a quarter. I remember the profound moment early in high school when I got a result back on a test and I went, oh, I suck at this. Yeah. Oh, this, I'm it's really bad. Though. It's important to be told that you suck at something. Yeah. Don't no, you think? I, I'm glad. Yeah. I, I thought, well, that's all right. I'll do something else. Yeah, yeah. Become a dilettante. Suffer under the delusion that maybe I could really make it doing trigonometry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll show that Pythagoras guy. <laughs> All right, let's feed back. Feedback. Friday today, so have you say feedback. Nice way to round out the week with a feedback Friday. Let's start the feedback in Theberton this morning because Mary is on the line. Morning to you, Mary. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good, thank you, Mary. How's life in the Barton? Oh, life in the bottom is uh, great if uh, the Crows can get it over the line there at uh, Sebi Oval. Now, Charles Stitt's getting involved. I mean, oh, oh you know, God, hopeless, all we need it? is the Queensland Premier to tell us what to do because he got the budgie back, didn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's got the, the oh, budgie. Yeah, the, the budgie. budgie's back. He's dealing, dealing with the big issues there. Uh, the so, yeah, he's dealing Premier. with the big issues, so maybe he can deal with our Sebi and Oval issues. Yeah, I think you're right, Mary. Why not? Hey, um, speaking of where you live... Do you think you could live in an apartment overlooking Victoria Square in the current state admin building? That's David's idea, real estate idea this week. Nah, definitely not. I can't live in a shoebox. No, yeah, nah, okay, fair enough. Can't live in a shoebox, nah. Yeah. Are you a fan of the Polly Waffle? Never. I don't like marshmallows, so I'm not a fan of the Polly Waffle, but I love the Violet Crumble. Okay. I'm Which with you on the Polly brought, Waffle, Mary. brought the Violet Crumble back. But the wafer in it's no good either. It's all yeah, messy. nah. D don't like the marshmallow. Nah, no. not, not, not my thing. All right. Good on uh, you. Men's bringing back the Polly Waffle, of course, this week too. Uh, do you think charges should be dropped against Julian Assange and he'd been sent back to Australia? You know what? I think it's uh, one of those topics that you best not talk about. Yeah, fair you enough. Might, you might start an argument as you're talking about this week. <laughs> It's a good point. It might be a good entry for the meat tray. Yeah, don't talk about politics, religion and Julia Sarge and you'll be right. Yeah, okay. It's going to be a long show. Uh, Mary, have you ever seen a band at the Crown and Anchor? Oh, back in the heyday, yeah. I, I don't even know what it was called. I think I was that drunk. <laughs> well, you must have had a good night there, Mary. I think so. I think so. Um, train drivers went on strike yesterday for increased pay. Have you ever gone on strike, Mary? Oh, I've chucked a sickie or two. Is that the same thing? Well, no, it's a one-person strike. It's a form of indolence. It's indolent. a one-person strike. It's called a hangover day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Might have been the day after you are at the cranker. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> good on you, good Mary. Good on you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Findon. Diesel, good morning. Hello, good morning. How are you? Good, thank you, Diesel. Um, Diesel, do you think the Crows are any chance uh, against Carlton tomorrow? I hope they lose. I really hate them. Oh, okay. really? Right. You're a Port supporter, Diesel. Yeah, a massive one. Okay, <laughs> sounds port, like it. Port. I think you probably get your wish, Diesel. Uh, um, have you ever seen a total eclipse of the sun? No, but I wish I could. Yeah, well, they... Uh, they uh, you sound like you've got your whole America. life ahead of you, though, Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to the Barossa, Diesel? Have you got a favourite Barossa town? Yeah, I do. What's that? Tenanda. I, I, got, I like Tanunda. Yeah, Tanunda's beautiful Tanunda's spot, good. but of course it was announced this week that Lindock's going to get to host a game of uh, the Gale Caravan around next Park. Year. The, the Caravan Park at Tanunda. Is that a family uh, holiday spot, is it? Yeah, I, I just like hanging out there. Yeah, beautiful. Fair you, enough. You've been on that, that water thing where they tip the big bucket of water on your head, Diesel? Yeah, it's actually really fun. It's good, Absolutely. isn't it? It does sound yeah. fun. Um, uh <laughs> I'm trying to have to alter these questions. Hey, um, do you like movies about gladiators, Diesel? <laughs> I'm just realising some of this isn't going to work. Hey, Diesel, um, do you get into the golf? The Masters is on at the moment, or is it something that's well, well and truly into your future? I want to go to the driving range one day, but I don't Oh, there you go. Them. they got that great one Good down there at, at Padawalunga. Yeah, <laughs> draw in golf. They run it. Graham Corns, of course, is at the Masters this year. Thank you. Thank you, Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That might have been the, the most inappropriate I'm moment in history. I shouldn't have said that. Fucked up. Anyway, if you've seen Flying Eye, you're having a very good time <laughs> like this morning.
<laughs> All right, uh, let's go to Warrandale. Thank you, Diesel. Uh, Blaine, good morning. Morning, gents. How are we? Good, Blaine. Good, thanks, Blaine. Hey, Blaine, have you ever seen Flying High? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. <laughs> you no enjoyed that yeah. last segment. <laughs> Say no more. Um, <laughs> Lee Matthews said this week that for Gather Round, a showdown should be played each year because we, uh, we here in South Australia are getting an unfair advantage. Do you agree with Lee Matthews? Well, he's the king, isn't he? He doesn't say too many things wrong, old Lee. Okay. So I can't really argue with him. All right, fair enough. Um, do you remember your 21st birthday party, Blaine? Uh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, was it, was it, Please explain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd rather not. Oh. Thank you. Well, okay, <laughs> geez. Has the statu statute of limitations hasn't expired yet, perhaps. <laughs> no, understood. <laughs> understood. We're talking 21st birthdays this week, but uh, the venues people hosted them at. Uh, there's plans for a 38-storey building at the Festival Plaza that were, that were announced earlier this week. What's the tallest building you've ever visited? Good question. No, it'd have to be something in Singapore, I think. We'll yeah. have a clue of the name. There's not many small ones in Singapore. Yeah. No, no. But that'll be uh, that'll stick out, I think, on North Terrace there. Yeah, it will. Certainly Absolutely. Will. Uh, they're changing yeah, the format of Scrabble to make it uh, more uh, simpler for G uh, Gen Z players. Do you have a favourite board game? Well, it's not Scrabble anymore. That's crap. <laughs> that absolute crap. Um, oh, probably Monopoly. Yeah. Monopoly. A bit boring, but yeah. that'd be the one. Uh, more than 70% of Australians are planning on travelling domestically before the end of April. Melbourne reportedly the most popular destination. Are you planning on going to Melbourne any time in the near future, Blaine? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a Tigers supporter, so uh, we're heading over in July, I think. Oh, beautiful. So you make what pilgrimage over once a year? Yeah, meet up with a couple of other mates from around the country and, uh, yeah, watch a few games of footy. Nice. So, nice weekend. Look forward to that. Good way yeah, to do absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. Good on you, Blaine. All right. <laughs> there was, you just never know what's going to happen at Feedback Friday. Um that was one for the ages. Who do we like for the hundred dollar Semtas seafood voucher? Look, they're all good. I think we'll give it to Young Diesel though. Yeah, I think so. It was excellent. I think Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Just sensational. Um, <laughs> Diesel, <laughs> but Mary and and Blaine oh, as well. Yeah, they were great you can hold too. your head high. No, they were but terrific. Young Diesel, easily our, our youngest contestant. Ever, yeah, I think. yeah, I think without a doubt. <laughs> good work trying to. PGify the questions on the fly. Well, I just wrote, one of the questions was about was about investment on Hindley Street, and I thought, <laughs> this, <laughs> I think Diesel's going to struggle with this one. That's right. Anyway, you you had one prepared as it turned out. <laughs> yeah, so I, did. I did. That was had excellent. One handy. Yeah. All right, let's check traffic. Thanks to Louver House, the leaders in turning your outdoor space into a great entertainment area with an opening and closing roof. Thanks, Will. Roads are looking pretty good for the run-in today, which is great. A few works you'll find at Port Adelaide, Barn Road near Causeway Road, also at Lonsdale, Dyson Road near O'Sullivan's Beach Road. Look out for road plates in use this morning at Dry Creek, Churchill Road North near Cormac Road, speeds at 40. you find cameras, Ocean Boulevard, Seacliff Park and Raglan Avenue at Edwardstown. Tina, the Tina Turner musical, opens out the Festival Theatre in two weeks. Preview tickets available for just $79. Book today at tinathemusical.com.au. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Hi, I'm Lynn Andrews. For over 50 years, we, the Lynn Andrews team, have specialised in commercial and residential property management. But above all, we specialise in people, helping to make life easier for investors and tenants. Everyone is treated with empathy and respect. It's the way we do business. It's the Lynn Andrews way. For residential and commercial property management, we're here to help you. Visit lynnandrews.com.au Get saving this month at City Discount Tyres. When you buy three Falcon CT60 tyres, you'll get the fourth tyre free. The perfect tyre for crossovers such as Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4. City Discount Tyres are a proud multi-tyre and wheel brand retailer offering great service at great prices. Visit citydiscounttires.com.au to find your nearest store. City Discount Tyres. We're driven by value. City Discount Tyres. Vitae Health Supplements are now available at Chemist Warehouse for just $49.99 a bottle. You save over $19 a bottle at Chemist Warehouse. Remember when milk came in bottles? I mean real glass bottles. It somehow tasted better and it was better for the planet. That's why the Flurio Milk Company have brought it back. Milk in a glass bottle. 
Thanks to you, the reduction in single-use plastic bottles is already proving phenomenal and the numbers continue to grow. Join the fight to reduce plastic single-use bottles and look for milk refill stations in your supermarket. Visit fluriomilkco.com.au for more. On 5AA Mornings, our school holidays start. The top 10 regional sites for drivers caught speeding by fixed and mobile speed cameras. South Australia's nuclear potential under investigation. And Adelaide remembers when today, looking back at some of your favourite chocolates and lollies with the launch this week of the Polly Waffle. It's back in stores. I'm Matthew Pantelis. Those topics, your calls, a lot more as well. Look forward to your company from nine. Ray White Business Sales. Business people selling businesses. Go on, touch base, search RWC Business Sales. David Penberthy and Will Goodings. 5AA Breakfast. Seven minutes to nine. Make sure you tune in to Stacey Lee this afternoon because, of course, it's a Friday, which means it's a foodie Friday, all thanks to Smeg and Powers. Building or renovating, your first choice will be visiting the Smeg showroom at Debney Distributors. Taste the difference with Smeg and Powers. Now, Chris Jarm is away today, so she'll be joined by Melissa Fideli, who's a former MasterChef contestant and nutritionist on the program. So tune in for that three o'clock foodie Friday. Let's head out on the road now. Jade Robbin is out and about for us, thanks to Dutton's. Morning, Jade. Good morning. I have been trying to find the Polly Waffle. Where is the Polly Waffle? I actually don't even believe that it's out today because I've hit up about six different stores and I cannot find it anywhere. Come on, Polly Waffles. Mm. Come on. I, you know, I need to be some sort of Instagrammer influencer because surely someone out there that's got a lot of followers would have been sent a sample to try it. But we <laughs> yeah. we are not cool enough here at 5AA to be sent any. Uh, I went to Drake's and they told me that their delivery arrives at one o'clock this afternoon, but to give it a couple of hours for the truck drivers to unload. So if you do want any, they did say they are getting a delivery, but I uh, I've, I bet I've searched high and low because I know that this has been many, many years in the making because the folks at Men's have been waiting for, I think it was a little tiny piece of machinery to be made and copied overseas and sent over. But because of COVID, it shut down all the factories. So it, it delayed the making and the return of the poly waffle. But now it's here, just can't find it anywhere. I think your theory is right. Jade, I think there's a chance that there's probably a bunch of FM airheads down at the Cube in <laughs> Darrenburg dancing, holding their poly waffles in the air at a oh, Sam, no, private sort of Sam Smith type concert. They'd be holding them and sort of dramatically looking off camera. Like, yes. Oh, like Listening to Hotel a, California. You've caught me in a private moment with my poly waffle. <laughs> totally instable, isn't it? Yeah. Just put, oh, it, put it up on your Instas, put it up on your socials. Oh, that's what yeah. they say, isn't it? That's good stuff. Here I am down at, you know, outside... The, the busted jetty at Port Wollonga with my poly waffle. Yeah. I am going to keep clothes. hunting because I do remember it. It was delicious back in the day, but I'm, I, I'd well, need to find so. out whether it does taste the same. I'm a big peppermint crisp fan or a or a violet crumble fan. But guys, hey, before I go, can I just give a big shout out to our Ambos? I had a bit of an incident on the way home from the boys' footy training last night. It was about quarter past five and we're driving down our street and we saw a gentleman who was passed out on our footpath and we, of course, pulled over, jumped over and, and went to the man's aid. He was actually having a cardiac arrest. Oh, no. oh, God. And so I shouted out to my son, call triple zero. And uh, so I spoke to the emergency triple O emergency centre there. And within three and a half minutes, we had three ambos there. Thankfully, the gentleman had a, uh, a defib, a heart starter implant. So it did kick in, but they were absolutely fantastic. And a big shout out, because I know that they get a big knock. They do their damnest to keep our you know ever the health you know all of us healthy and and, mm. and safe and and get to these call outs as fast as they can and they they certainly did so miles who i know was taken off to the ra if you're listening or you got family out there i hope you've made a, a speedy recovery mate yeah good on you jade and it, it, unbelievable important point to make and a, a a good a good one to remember most certainly. Uh, all right, we've got a meat tray to give away. Uh, call in and see Chris and the team at Hayden's Family Butcher Shop, 52 in Burnside Village. Who do we like? Well, look, first, we should say sorry. to just, We had hundreds of calls. We just couldn't get to all of them. We had so many texts as well. Very funny. A lot of We should almost to. publish our texts so you can read them. Some of them. Yeah, some of them. <laughs> yeah, we'd be uh, keeping the courts busy sometimes, if we read all of them. Sometimes they're just jokes between us and the listeners. <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> Both the courts and the Human Rights Commission might have something to say about the unfettered thoughts of our excellent and rambunctious listeners. Um, George from Modbury, uh, just for his 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 um, emphatic account of how the old pineapple divides the family, uh, pizza wise. Um, so many great calls. Uh, Monopoly, teenage girls, mm. people getting bail, you name it. Bernie, Karen, Ben, Dean, the list goes on. But George from Mobbury, good on you, mate. We know you're a keen listener, and uh, we would like to give you the meat tray. Thanks to Chris and the team at Hayden's Family Butcher. I bought some excellent filet mignons there um, a couple of years back. They were superb. Shop 52 at the Burnside Village. We'll leave with Fuel Watch on this uh, Friday morning. Make sure you download the free RA app where you can uh, use the Fuel Trends feature and always keep ahead of the curb. Uh, the mobile Lower North East Road Paradise, $1.84.5. The OTR McGill Road Kensington Garlands, uh, $1.86.9. The OTR Main North Road Blair Athol, $1.87.5. And the ex convenience Wellington Road Mount Barker. Uh, is more expensive but cheap for the area, dollar ninety five point five. The cheapest digs or the Liberty Morfitt Road, Camden Park, dollar eighty eight point nine. And to end on a cinematic note, after the flying high reference, one of our listeners has texted in on the Dutton's text line claiming to have found a polywaffle in his pool. One there for the Caddyshack fans. Oh dear. Not too bad. Matt Pantelis is next. Are you thinking about a sea change? Where you